Okay, so welcome everyone. Uh, today we are happy to have Masaito Yamazaki joining us from Japan, who is going to tell us about query angians and crystal melting. Thank you for joining us. Okay, so can everybody hear me? Uh, yeah. So yes, I I, <laughs> Masahito, thank you for coming. I'm uh, sorry, I'm not joining with video. We have a power oh, outage, so. Of course, of course no problem. <laughs> right, I'm course, calling yeah. on a Wi-Fi, and it's everything's a bit oh, slow. I see, I see, I see. Great I see. to have yeah, you. Thank you for taking the travel uh, to join the seminar. Oh uh, no, no, no. So, so happy to 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 be able to see you. Okay. Uh huh. I see. I see. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. So yeah. So today I'm very happy to present our work uh, on this topic called this Quiver Young Yams and Kusa Melting. And uh, it's for me personally, it's really a pleasure to give this presentation to uh, people at Berkeley because uh, there are several experts uh, on this exactly the topic. And, and in fact, some of the things I, I, I did in the past uh, has something to do with Berkeley. So, uh, and, and uh, yeah, so let, let me start with the uh, gradually because this is still five in the morning in Japan. So I'm afraid my brain is really working. So I apologize if I some, say something completely wrong. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so this work is based in collaboration uh, with, uh, first of all, there is a paper by Wei Li, um, who is at Beijing and uh, which appeared in March. Uh, and there is another paper which I wrote with uh, our IPM postdoc, uh, Dmitry Garakov, uh, who many of you might know because he was a postdoc at uh, Berkeley, of course. And, uh, and, and there are many related papers. And I'm afraid that in this particular presentation, my list of references is highly incomplete. So uh, please refer to uh, the paper for a slightly at least better one. But at least uh, uh, one of my personal uh, inspiration uh, come from uh, this paper uh, by Miroslav and others. Uh, and uh, yeah, and so uh, in fact, the Yapin and the uh, Gufan was visiting IPU, so I talked a little bit with them, and uh, and and I wanted to understand this paper, but in a sense, uh, rather than understand the paper in itself, I thought I, I should try to understand it in my in my own way. So I started doing that in my way, and which I'm going to present. And it's really interesting to see what are exact relations or how, yeah, which uh, maybe some of the ingredients from one can be transferred to other. Uh, and so it's nice to uh, uh, see, and then you see, so this paper will be posted at pH, but uh, some of those ingredients are very mathematical and uh, there are a lot of related works about homological whole algebra, et cetera. So I think this is a top, good topic and uh, mathematical physics. And some of the things, uh, so uh, I'm going to say are in fact uh, based on earlier works. Uh, and that was the works I did when I was a graduate student. And um, so I have several topics on the, uh, yeah, several papers on the topic, but one of them was uh, the paper I wrote with Hiroshi Oguri um, and, uh, in 2008, uh, where we introduced this uh, crystal melting techniques. And uh, so there are several papers, uh, but some of the ingredients are sort of summarized in my thesis, uh, which is a PhD thesis. And, uh, and, and also uh, many of the combinatorial techniques of the diamond models and toric diagrams, et cetera, are, are in my uh, master's thesis. So, uh, so these are some underlying ingredients, uh, but I'm going to introduce these uh, ingredients uh, 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 gradually. So let me begin with, uh, first of all, uh, some overview before coming to uh, something complicated. Uh, so, um, Okay, so first, uh, this talk is, uh, can be put in a very broader framework uh, of the relation between geometry and, uh, and the physics. And uh, so you start with some geometry. Uh, so this, this I said a little bit abstract. You start with some geometry. And uh, if you're a mathematician, you can think of the string theory or supposedly gauge theory, whatever. So these are the gadgets to study starting with the geometry and construct some interesting a moduli space and, uh, and enumerative invariance. So here I highlight the BPS degeneracies. That's a very physics uh, jargon, uh, but it typically captures some enumerative invariance, some concrete numbers about the geometry you started with. So you have a very cute set of numbers which you can compute that's already impressive, uh, but it's also the case that these are not just a random set of numbers, uh, but uh, contains some uh, there are some structures and, uh, and the structure is the best way quite often to characterize the structure is to say that there is some underlying algebra. Um, and uh, so that does uh, and Harvey and Mover and uh, other people have conjectured in general that there is some BPS state algebra. 
Uh, so there is abstract definition, but it's always uh, quite often the case not easy to identify uh, this. I, I think you see the cursor, right? So I'm just moving it around. So, uh, so uh, yeah, so, so there is this VPS state algebra and, uh, and then this underlying algebra acts on this VPS state. So this, uh, for this reason, VPS state is a good way to uh, uh, characterize this VPS state systematically. And indeed, this VPS state algebra is often infinite dimensional. So it's highly powerful uh, organizational principle uh, behind all these. And, uh, and, and, and the, the setup I'm going to talk about is a little bit more specific. So here the geometry is a uh, Caravia three-fold, uh, which I denoted X. And, uh, and you can consider string theory. For example, I consider uh, type two a string theory, whatever that means. And, uh, and, uh, and, and that, that, that's a 10 dimension theory, uh, which is the four dimension times the Caravia three. So that's typical setup of string theory. And, uh, and then geometrically, so this Caravia three fold is a complex manifold. So you can talk about the holomorphic cycles, holomorphic submanifolds. Uh, so there are zero cycles, two cycles, four cycles, or six cycles, namely the Caravia itself. And, uh, and, and then for each uh, cohomology class of this, uh, uh, of this Caravia, so people well, in physics language call the charges. So for, if you specify the cohomology class or more, more general case theory class, et cetera, uh, but then you have uh, very, uh, basic and then say it's a cohomology class. And uh, so if you specify the charges, you can count the number of states uh, with that charge, how many states there are. And uh, so that's the number I was talking about, the BPS degeneracy. And, uh, and then this, uh, so you can, so this is a for fixed E gamma, which is a class in the cohomology, but then you can consider the generating function by introducing a formal parameter. So here I denote the Q, but it's actually a set of parameters for each uh, uh, basis of this uh, cohomology. And this is the, what we might call BPS partition function. And this I call the BPS partition function, but uh, uh, it, it, it can also be studied in mathematics in different languages. For example, it's, uh, it's a generating function for the so-called Donaldson-Thomas invariance or their generalizations or uh, in some other chambers, it's, it's a pond harry pond thomas invariance or uh, if you yeah, assume MNLP conjecture, it's also related really, to the gromov fitting invariance, uh, which in turn is a topological stream partition function in the, uh, in the physics parlance. So, uh, so there are various different ways of uh, uh, calling this or defining this, but that's basically, uh, there is just a single good partition function and, and what data of the geometry it depends on is, uh, is a little bit more subtle than this because they are a wall crossing, for example. So there's a, a extra dependence on which uh, chamber in the Kera modular, it's complex by Kera modular space you are in. So there is a little bit of extra data, uh, which I'm not going to emphasize too much, but, but anyway, that's, that's, the, that's the partition function you can talk about. So these are very concrete answers. And, uh, and it's defined, uh, so this is well defined already for any basic Caravia 3 as, as this is. But computing this is quite often difficult, especially for compact Caravia. If you take a quintic, for example, it's not easy. So uh, in, the, in the setup I'm going to talk about, I uh, take advantage of the Torah symmetry. So I assume that this is a toric Caravia 3. So there is a Torah action. And, uh, and then you can do the localization, the equivalent localization with this torus action and, and this BPS degeneracy. So it's a Euler character basically of some moduli space reduces to some combinatorial counting problem. And, uh, and that, it turns out that's uh, given by some combinatorial counting statistical mechanical model, uh, which was identified to be the statistical mechanical model of crystal melting. So that's the crystal melting partition function. So, so the statement is now that uh, there is a, in, in this case, there is some underlying algebra, which we identified in our work, uh, namely the B, uh, and we call it the BPS quiver Youngian, because, uh, uh, because it is defined from the data of the quiver, as we will specify, and uh, it's, uh, in some cases, it corresponds to a fine Youngian. So we call it the BPS quiver Youngian. Sometimes we are, this is a little bit too long, so we call it just a quiver Youngian. So, um, and so this is a new infinite dimensional algebra and then this gives the organization principle for this uh, partition function, either this uh, generating function of DT invariance or crystal melting partition functions. And, uh, and so this is the basically the first half or, or maybe even two thirds of my talk. And, uh, and, and then uh, uh, in the remaining part of my talk, if I have time, I'm going to 
try to be a little bit more uh, extra more physical and then try to explain these BPS Nyangians um, uh, more physically, starting with the supersymmetric quantum mechanics of these particles. So here you have BPS particles. Uh, so we have D brains lapping holomorphic cycles. For example, D2 brain lapping holomorphic two cycle. So D2 brain three dimensional, two plus one dimensional. So when it laps the two cycle, it gives like to remain in one direction. It gives the quantum mechanics. So there is some supersymmetric quantum mechanics uh, describing this BPS particle. And, uh, and then that gives a like, nice moduli space and things like that. And, and from there, you can uh, describe how this BPS quiver Youngians arise. So depending on your uh, interest or expertise, I think you, are, you might be interested in different aspects of the story. For example, if you are a representation series, you might be just say, okay, this is a new, so new infinite dimensional algebra. So forget about all the deal brands and geometry and everything. Just take the defining relations, for example, this algebra and talk about, and, this, and the whole uh, aspect, one of the whole content of my talk is that it, there is a new, new infinite dimensional algebra and I talk about some particular representation for that. But you can ask what is the property of the representation, there could be other representation, et cetera. So that's the more representation theory viewpoint. But, but of course, this is about the geometric representation theory. So there is underlying geometry and the moduli space. And uh, so that, that might be the aspect you might be interested in. Or if you're a physicist, uh, you don't like the idea that this algebra is introduced from top down. So you might want to understand the derivation. So that's the part I'm going to talk towards the last. So, um, so this is the overall uh, idea. And I'm now coming to more details uh, gradually. Are, are there any questions so far? Yeah, uh, will you be able to associate such an algebra to any uh, Tori Calabio threefold? Yeah, any Tori Calabio threefold. Yes, it, it works for any Tori Calabio threefold, and that's the interesting part because uh, for uh, geometry, for some geometries, people have uh, already identified the, geometry, uh, the algebra. But here, it works for any Tori Calabio three, and in particular, it works for the, some geometries like a canonical bundle. Uh, so those are the geometries with the compact four cycle, and as far as I know, uh, nobody has nobody has uh, uh, this department. Are there any results okay, beyond Calabiao? Sorry? Can you go beyond Calabiao? Ah, oh, yeah, beyond Calabiao. Yeah, beyond Calabiao, I have no idea. Uh, yeah, for example, I can be a little bit more or less ambitious and then try to go to, for example, Calabiao fourfold, for example. Calabiao three times C, et cetera. But even that, uh, it's, not, uh, it's not clear. I mean, yeah. From the point of view of uh, gauge theory, of the square gauge theories, you can always take some massive limit, right? And then you would not don't yeah, have to. So, so you can, for example, yeah, I mean, so that's the, yeah. So for example, here you can go to, yeah. Uh, I mean, a problem itself might exist, but for example, here is, it's, there, there are some particular structure like a torus action, things localized the fixed points. And then many of the techniques I use are very intimate to tie with story Caribbean three. So, at least one, the type of the things I'm going to say, it's very, it's, it's not obvious how to generalize, but conceptually, conceptually, uh, uh, it could, yeah, uh, it's uh, probably um, there, I don't know. I mean, there can be some algebra and, uh, I mean, for, for example, the algebra BPS state itself, it's, I think you can define very abstractly, like a two BPS states particles and then bring them two together, et cetera. So, uh, so at the abstract level, the algebra exists. So indeed uh, it's, um, yeah, for any, even uh, for super the gauge theory, which doesn't necessarily correspond to particular uh, geometry. Uh, I don't know, I can't think of a good example now, but because nowadays um, so many of the things can be constructed from just geometrical setup. Uh, so, uh, but, uh, but uh, yeah, but the concept of this uh, BPS data algebra itself is more general, I think. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So let's see. Um, so so let's uh, let's uh, then then try to uh, gradually come to a little bit more details. So uh, so in the so let me first describe by uh, start by describing the crystal melting. But uh, so this is because this is the underlying material, and uh, and this is, this is already a ten year old material. But maybe. It, uh, it's useful to introduce it. And then I'm going to talk about this uh, quiver young yans. Uh, so this is the, in, uh, the main, in a sense, main content. So namely, introduce the algebra and talk about the representation. Uh, 
So here, the way I introduce it is that I introduce the algebra by top down, just define it, and then see that it has a representation on the crystal melting states. Uh, but of course, it's historically what- can I, can I ask you ahead of time? So, um, so that uh, quiver algebra that you have, what will be the relationship between uh, with the uh, uh, Kimura Peston quiver W algebras? Well, let's see. I don't know. I mean, in fact, uh, let's see. For, for example, even the data, uh, input data for, for these algebras are different. For example, uh, for example, in our case, it, it, you, you, okay, so Kimura Peston, they start with 4D n equal 2, I think, at the minimum. So, but here we start with 4D n equal 1 theory. So, 4D n equal 1 theory, and consequently, uh, we have a cleaver with a superpotential, for example. And associate moduli space is Kera, not hyper Kera. And so uh, even the input data is different. Uh, so if you want to, and, and also, for example, partly related with that, we don't have a, we, what we discussed in more general though, in thinking diagrams and things like that. So uh, we, the underlying combinatorial data is more general. But, but, you're, uh, but yes. You're studying BPS states in a 40 n equals two vacuum, right? The quiver being having a, Four yes. supercharges is because the the states in. So yes, I mean, yes, yes. Okay, you're okay. That's right. So yeah. So in a sense, it's not. Uh, yeah, of course you can. In that sense, it's the same. So you know, we have a four D equal two theory, and those are the same as the yeah uh, Basili setup, and uh, and and here I'm just uh, right. So taking the viewpoint that uh, let's take the BPS half BPS particles inside four D equal two and describe the whatever happens in terms of the half BPS theory. So that's why the number of supersymmetry is reduced. But but quite often the case you can also start with the four D theory in itself and then discuss a lot of stuff. So uh, so in that sense it's the same setup. I think that's what it means and I, I agree with that in the sense. But uh, but the underlying but what partly I'm saying that partly because the underlying combinatorial structure seems to be a little bit different. But but anyway, setting aside that, uh, I think I don't know what are the relations. That that's a short answer. Uh, it'd be nice to understand uh, the relations, and uh, if there is any. And, and clearly the name Kuiper Yangian, for example, is uh, meant to be somewhat, <laughs> is inspired by Kuiper Dabra algebra, as you might think of that. So uh, there can be some relations. I mean, and, and indeed the Kuiper Yangian is uh, in some cases at least is related with the uh, W algebra. So W1 plus infinity or the, their counterparts, some generalization. So, uh, the number of structure is already here in this uh, quiver Yangian, but it's just that I, I want to know, know the precise statement is the uh, relation with the quiver W algebra, which I don't know yet. Well, maybe I, I can add a, a small comment. I think these algebras that you are defining, these quiver Yangians, are generally more, uh, much more general than uh, than the Kimura Peston things, because Kimura okay. Peston, uh, these are just W algebras, just, but the things that you can you you are defining doesn't have do, don't have to be W algebras. So this is some, uh -huh. definitely something more general. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. I see, I see. Yeah, good. Yeah. So uh, and uh, yeah, okay. So so that that's why yeah, I think um, even just purely representation theoretically, for example, there are a lot of new insights into what these algebras are, and uh, so uh, so. Yeah, so I really want uh, somebody, some experts to look into this uh, algebra and then just uh, study it. As I said, uh, the, you can just take the defining relations, for example, it's, it's, uh, and then you don't have to read a paper, just extract some sections and even show the formula from now on. And uh, anyway, so that, that's uh, what happens. Uh, okay, maybe I'm going to throw, let's see. <laughs> let's see, so let's come to the crystal melting. And, uh, and for this, uh, let me start with uh, uh, the simplest uh, crystal melting model, which was introduced by uh, Okunko Reishi Buffa, and, uh, uh, and, and also there was a subsequent follow up paper by Iqbal Necros, Okunko Buffa, and others. So, so that was, uh, okay, so here is, that was a crystal melting for C3, that's uh, the simplest Calabria 3 fold, just the flat. And, uh, and then the crystal melting is given by this, uh, this type of pictures. So it's a plane partition. So 3D partition, as it's well known. And, uh, and the generating function is the Nakamaho function, which I denoted here. And, and the content of this, one of the contents of this paper is that it can be identified with the topological string uh, A model partition function on C3. 
Okay, so this is uh, well done, but now, now, okay, so I, I can say the same thing in a slightly different language so that it helps to consider how to generalize this to any color, toric color. So the point is that this is C3, but we want to generalize it to other uh, toric color geometries. Um, so the way to do that, well, okay, first of all, there is a statement that this, uh, uh, this frame partition counts the ideal sieves in the literature. Uh, so it counts the D0, D6 states and uh, counts the ideal sieves. And what is meant by that is that if you have a frame partition, for example, so it's a set of uh, points, IJK, uh, integer points. And, uh, and if you take this uh, uh, frame partition, you can take the complement. And for any point on the complement, which is you know, the IJK, there is a polynomial, XI, Y, J, and ZK. And that defines the ideal inside this uh, polynomial ring in three variables, X, Y, Z. And because, for example, if you multiply by x, for example, it's uh, still outside. If you, are, if you are sitting outside and you multiply by x, which means to go move inside this x direction, you're still outside. So this defines the ideal. And uh, that's why people say it's, you count the ideal safe. And, uh, and then so the, the fact that this is a 3D partition, not just a random subset, is represented by this condition that uh, if some of the points, uh, if you go, uh, uh, if you take, if you start, if you're interested in whether this or not, uh, this point is in the set lambda, and then they find out that, for example, if you shift i by one, and that if that is in lambda, the original point should be here. So that, that's that's essentially exactly the same thing as this condition. That this idea. So it, so this lambda is a set characterized by this condition, and that's that that's what I call the melting rule, uh, which I want to generalize. And, uh, and and another aspect is that here we have a polynomial ring. And the way polynomial ring arises, uh, is, okay, in a slightly different way, uh, is that uh, it comes from the this quiver. So, well, okay, so here we have a toric diagram, uh, the so-called toric diagram for C3, just a triangle. Uh, it's a complex polygon in Z2. And uh, if you, so this is how you people characterize the toric carbia 3. So if you are not familiar with that, you can just think of it as a convex polygon in the in the one of the two planes inside three dimensions, and make a, a convex form, and then that, that you, you get a form, and it's a dual with the events of the moment map. So it defines a toric carabia three, and and then there is a uh, okay. So given this geometry, there is a associated quiver, uh, and quiver is a very simple. So there is a three arrows, one vertex, and three arrows. Uh, so you can define the algebra, fast algebra, starting with the concatenation of these uh, edges, x, y, z. But now there is a condition that x and y uh, commute. That's why you get the polynomial ring. And the way you get this is that you have something called a potential, super potential in physics language, uh, x, y, z minus x, e, y. And you take the derivative and consider the Jacobian ideal. And, that, and then the quotient, take a quotient of that, that gives side to this polynomial ring. And, and the fact that you have three, uh, uh, okay, so here in this crystal melting picture, there are three directions, and these three directions correspond to these uh, arrows, x, y, z. So here I have the single node and three arrows. I just loaded uh, somewhat periodically and x, y, z directions. So each of these three arrows in the different directions represent uh, x, y, z directions. And, uh, and that picture, as you see, is, uh, is in almost the same as this crystal melting picture. Sorry, can I ask one question? Yes. Yeah, so, so, so still on the previous slide, I was trying to understand what the melting rules are. And um, uh, yeah, so, so yeah. melting rule, for example, here it's a set, right? So, so lambda, I denote it as a set. Uh, here so lambda, so, set. so uh, again, uh, lambda, what is a lambda? Lambda is a plane partition. It's like the yes, way so, you yeah, tell lambda, boxes lambda to the corner. Partition. And here I denote it, uh, I regard it as a set of, uh, set of uh, points, ijk, a uh, finite okay. set of points, ijk. Okay. But i and j and k runs from, for example, zero to infinity. Okay. And uh, and this condition says that, for example, suppose that, uh, for example, you know that this box is taken, right? So. So are they like the corner box, of the box, like you tell? Yeah. Well, not okay. So it, it doesn't have to be a corner, but let, for example, okay, maybe this is here. So let's take this box. Yeah, the corner box, for example. Sorry, I can't see your uh, pointer or... Oh, okay, so oh, maybe you don't see the cursor. So, oh, I see. Okay, then, then I, I need to explain words. So, yeah, so in fact, this is uh, just the same as the, this condition. So, uh, this melting rule is the same as this condition that the complement is, is ideal. Uh, yeah, so for example, here so it that, says that... So that means yeah. uh, it's a, as a, as a post-set, it's the ideal under the... 
Yeah, so, so this, this is, yeah, no, sorry, complement the Gibbs ideal. Mm -hmm. and, uh -huh. uh, and then, so, yeah, so for example, here it says that if i, j, k is not in lambda, then if you multiply by uh, x, i shifts by i plus one, right? So i plus one, j, k is not, should not be lambda. Right, yes. Mm -hmm. And I, I think I, I take the opposite, uh, uh, not the opposite, sorry, I forgot the English word. <laughs> okay, so why is it called a mounting rule? Ah, yeah, because I, okay, so I, I just, it's just a name. I'm, I'm going to discuss the crystal melting and I'm going to, so what I'm going to do is that generalize this crystal melting to something much more complicated. And, uh, and, and then still take a finite dimensional subset. And the counterpart of the plate partition is going to be some, some, fi uh, some finite dimensional subset of the crystal satisfying this, uh, this type of condition, generalizing this. So that, okay, that, okay. that's why I just thought of quick melting rule. Yeah. Anyway, okay, it's just sure. a name here. OK. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I, the reason I explained this, uh, explain this example is that it's very useful to think of. So let's see. So here we have a crystal melting, and then here what we have is that uh, this, uh, 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 this polynomial ring, which arises from this quiver and pass algebra and divided by Jacobians. And, and I'm going to take a final subset uh, from that, satisfying some conditions uh, that which I call the melting rule. So, and, and the point is that the story generalizes to uh, completely arbitrary toric cardio threefold. So let me explain that. So uh, this is a complicated example. Somehow it has been one of my favorite examples, uh, but uh, but uh, uh, it's, a, it's not too complicated in a sense, but it's also sort of general. So it, it doesn't have too particular symmetry. And in any case, so this is a Calabio threefold geometry described by the equations x, y equal to z, w squared. And, and the toric diagram is uh, given by this convex polytope. And, and, and uh, okay, so you, you go through a lot of procedures and then the final result is that the crystal melting is this picture. So let me explain this picture. So this is already complicated. So, and, and in particular, this is a three-dimensional structure. Um, so th this is a three-dimensional structure, it's complicated. So let's first consider a two-dimensional projection of the picture. And, and, and then first of all, okay, then you don't do care too much about the, three, this, uh, uh, the direction vertical to this uh, screen. And, and you still have the same set of arrows here. Uh, and then you realize that there is a periodic, periodic structure. So these patterns, uh, but first of all, there is this black white vertices, which is dual to this original graph, but let's forget about these things and, uh, and just concentrate on these uh, arrows, uh, uh, black arrows, oriented arrows. And then this picture repeats. So, it's a, and so it means that this is testeration of the frame by some basic building blocks. And the basic building blocks it's, it's a little bit hard to see in this picture, but it turns out it looks like this. So this is uh, one of the P's of the frame tessellation. And, uh, and inside it, there are three vertices and uh, many arrows, seven arrows in, in between. So, so and, and then this is a, uh, one of the crucial data for this uh, uh, quiver construction. And, and in particular, for example, so this is a graph, oriented graph between the two dimensional torus. But suppose that you forget the fact that, that this graph is leading on the torus. Then it gives rise to the quiver, first of all. And this is, so this is a quiver for the toric curvature geometry I started with. Now, uh, uh, and, and so it's a, it's a set of vertices, which I do not one to three, and then there are a set of arrows. Uh, so a set of vertices I denote by Q0 and a set of arrows by Q1. So this is a typical quiver data, but because the quiver is realized on the frame, it contains a little bit more information. And that's the information of the superpotential. So for example, here, if you look at it, uh, there's a triangle going from one, 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 three, three, one. So on this quiver, it's like, uh, oh, maybe you don't see the cursor. Oh, okay, so one, 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 three. So there is a closed loop on this uh, uh, quiver diagram uh, and that's represented by the triangle on this, uh, on this frame. 
So, uh, so here in this case, I think there are four, uh, I believe four, but anyway, so there are many faces here. And for each term, you uh, take a formal word, a product of the, all these arrows. So that plays a role of the uh, superpotential, whose derivative uh, uh, gives rise to some relations in the past algebra. Uh, so you start with the set of uh, uh, arrows and uh, arrows, and then you, you define formal concatenation. So if you can concatenate, uh, then you, 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 you just take the, define the product to be concatenated fast. If not, uh, you don't concatenate and set it to zero. So that's the fast algebra, and then divide by this uh, Jacobian ideal, and that is the uh, fast algebra associated with this uh, geometry. So previously, W is the XYZ minus XZY, et cetera. So uh, this uh, Jac Jacobian ideal is so enforces the condition that uh, the arrows commute XY for YX. But in general, it's more complicated. And, uh, and uh, so in particular, this is uh, now this algebra, underlying algebra is non-commutative algebra. And in, in, in mathematics context, I think, uh, for example, Fandenberg studied it uh, and uh, in, for the conifold and called it non-commutative non Grepant resolution. So, uh, because the yeah, module category of that uh, algebra uh, gives rise to the direct category coherence of the Grepant resolution of the conifold. And, uh, and, 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 and here, the relations have a nice uh, picture. So here we have uh, two superpotential. For example, this, let's look at this picture. Oh, maybe you, you don't see the cursor. Okay, so uh, the picture on the, the below. And, uh, and, and then here you have two uh, faces, right? So, and, and uh, if you take the relations, this edge uh, colored let is shared between two faces. So if you take the derivative, you have a product of these things and a product of these things on the left and right are the same. So the F-term relations, the relations in the past algebra, are just a statement that you can move around the, uh, this uh, periodic quiver in a different way, but as long as the endpoints and the starting points are the same, they are equivalent. So that's the, uh, con that's the condition. Sorry, can you explain a bit where does the three-dimensional crystal come from? Suppose I just have a... Well, let's see here. Uh, uh, yeah, here, in fact, I explained in the, sorry, the opposite way. So you start with the 3D crystal as given and try to go backwards and explain it. Uh, but if you want to try to construct the crystal, first of all, uh, you start with Calabria geometry and then identify uh, this type of graph. So namely this uh, data, quiver, arrow, and the superpotential. And then there is an algorithm for doing that, uh, but uh, it's it's complicated, so I'm not going to do that. But okay. at least a good, yeah. But at least a good criteria, mathematical statement. Let's choose this data: quiver, vertex, arrow, and relations, mm. such that this underlying pass algebra, module category of this pass algebra, is the same as the uh, derived category of the co coherence of the original Calabria three. Okay, so, that's, so you, okay, yeah, that's right. Yeah, it turns I mean, out to be commutative. Well, not, not in general, non-commutative. Yeah, but for, from this, uh, the, the thing you obtained from this construction turns out to be, uh, oh, no, no, no sorry, sorry no, you're right. Even though the category yeah. uh, is equivalent. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah. non-commutative. Yeah, that's right. So that's one ca characterization of what this quiver should be. There is an algorithm for constructing that total trajectory, but that's in general. But there is also another statement. For example, if you take a quiver, you can define the uh, moduli space of quiver. It's basically some version of the uh, 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 Nakajima quiver variety. And, uh, and if you, in, in some cases that, uh, well, in case you have to choose the dimension vector, et cetera, but if you choose the right one, it, it reproduces the, again, the current original Calabria geometry itself, for example. So that's another, uh, another uh, conditions you might wish for this uh, quiver. And uh, so there, there are some, for example, my ex author Kazushi Weather and also Ishii, uh, they worked on uh, in this context, how to prove that type of statement uh, mathematically. Yeah, okay, so, so, so the 2D projection, is, so the set I so far is that the 2D projection of the crystal is complicated, but it's basically just a quiver written on the two dimensional torus, uh, repeated periodically, and then that's, uh, that gives like to this data, and, uh, and uh, so that, that's how it explains so far. But if, if you want to go back to the 3D crystal, you should be able to lift it back to three dimensions. And, and the way to do that is to, uh, uh, to, to is this uh, as follows. So here, maybe I can explain already in this example. Here, uh, you have, you can do, starting with this blue vertex, 
and move around one of the triangles and come back to itself. And you and then you're supposed to go to uh, even deeper in the in, in the three dimensional direction depths. So it's like a spiral. You come back to the original place, but deeper in the structure. And so so basically, the rule is that whenever you go around, uh, you become you go deeper into the crystal. So uh, and, and so statement is follows. So suppose that I choose one point, starting point, another an O, which I denote O, and another point A, and you go around, and any pass, if you use these relations coming from the uh, 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 this uh, 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 this uh, Jacobian ideal, then that means that any two pass is equivalent uh, up to that relation, uh, except for a possible factor of root. So you can go from one one point O to A, and you can go straight. In this case, just one oriented segment, or you can go around. For example, in this case, uh, go around, and then that's the same as going around one extra step of the loop. So whenever you have that loop, uh, you you count the steps. And, and this picture below gives a sort of a graphical representation. So you can go around and on this uh, periodic tessellation and come back to itself. But if you go around a little bit redundantly, then you go deeper in the crystal. Yeah. And, and uh, anyway, so that's the structure. And then it's, uh, so you, you can, maybe it's useful to just uh, take this, apply it to the C3 example I talked about and then convince yourself it's a frame partition. And, and, uh, and so here I denoted, to define the crystal itself, but then I want to count the um, configuration of molten crystal. Uh, well, maybe I should go back here. So here we have the uh, corner. So we have the corner. So here I describe the counterpart of the corner, but you have to talk about the molten configuration, which is the frame partitions. And it satisfies some melting rule. And I have a generalization of that melting rule uh, for this case, uh, which is that, uh, so you take a finite subset from the crystal. And so let's take some atom, for example. And, uh, and so that's, that's you know, the bad box. And, uh, and so let's suppose, for example, I take this, uh, okay, so maybe you can't, you don't see, sorry, you, you, do, you, do you see the cursor? No? No, I don't see. Hmm, I see. Yeah, I see. So let's see. Yeah, let's say, for, for example, if you take, a, say, okay, that's a problem in you know, a complicated picture like this, but. Uh, There's annotate yeah. tool in, in the Zoom. Probably ah, I see. Important. Yeah, okay, maybe there is a way to do that. Uh, okay, but I'm not like sure if I... Yeah, oh, oh, the I yeah. oh, okay, I see. Oh, maybe, the, oh, yeah, I see. I should do this. So let's see, is there a pointer? Uh, eraser, stamp, uh, let's see, mouse? Oh, maybe, oh, oh sorry, not here. Uh, spot drive. There's a, there's a drawing tool you can draw and then you can erase. Ah, uh, is a uh, draw tool. Oh, yeah, yeah, I see, thank you, yes. So here, for example, oh, sorry. Uh, but now, okay, I have to somehow when I click, it's, uh, oh, I see, so it's, uh, yeah, okay, so, okay, so somehow, oh, okay, when I click, it just, uh, it's, okay, I don't know how to use it, uh, <laughs> unfortunately, right now, yeah. Uh, anyway, Masahito, so, okay. uh, can, you, can you remind us, uh, um, how do you know how um, the depths in, in which you go in the crystal? Is it some equivariant weight, like some weight of, of the, the from the weights of the arrows, or? Yeah, that's 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 right. So, for example, for each whenever you go through one arrow, there is a equivalent weight for each arrow, and uh, and uh, yeah, that's right. So and and uh, so for so that means that if you go around and uh, if, if the equivalent weights of the loop doesn't add up. Um, and then it's uh, it, it, it it means that you go deeper in the crystal. Although for, for actually for the yeah, localized, I, I, I yeah. yes, yes. Uh, so yeah, so the, the the torus actions on the the torus actions on the calabial translate into the into the weights of the arrows, right? And so yeah, you correct. can play That's between it, yeah. the two to sort of determine the pointed lattice. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah, so that's the counterpart of the 3D crystal. So for the 3D crystal, you have x, y, it's three directions. So you have uh, three weights, h1, h2, h3. So it's parameterized in three different directions. And, and, uh, and a typical in the localization, there is a condition that sum of h is zero. So that means just counts the direct dimensions in the 2D projection. So there is a similar uh, uh, structure here, uh, which I'm coming to. So.
Yeah. Uh, okay. So this melting rule is uh, okay. So here I stated it. Maybe another way to say that is that it's a subset. And if you take a complement, it gives uh, a, again the idea of the fast algebra. So uh, and, and anyway, so maybe I shouldn't spend too much. Okay, I'm going slow, so I shouldn't spend too much time explaining this. But the point is that you, you have a well-defined combinatorial object, and it just counts such a configuration of crystals. And here you have uh, three colors because there the quiver has three vertices. And there are four, in this configuration, I take four white atoms. So you have uh, uh, Q0, uh, Q white to the fourth power, and then uh, Q's, Q this gray for south power, and Q black for fourth power. So you just count the number of uh, atoms for each, uh, each color, and then consider generating function. So that's the crystal melting partition function. And the statement, as I said, is that this gives the BPS partition function. And, uh, and then you can discuss wall crossing, et cetera. And it also coincides with the donaldson thomas partition function or pandahari pandey thomas partition function. That's what people have studied. Now, uh, OK, so that's a combinatorial object. And uh, there was some indication already uh, that there is there's some interesting structure here. So people computed the partition functions for various geometries. And this take an infinite product form, which uh, was first found by mathematicians. And we, we also, with paper with Mina and the Hiroshi and Kamra, we tried to explain the structure. And, and in the infinite product form takes this form that uh, like uh, here in this numerator is one, everything is the denominator for this uh, obifold geometry. But if you take a conifold, you have something in the numerator. And for more complicated geometry, so this is the geometry whose uh, crystal I explained, you have both numerator and denominator. So, uh, so this is some, clearly some indication that perhaps you should consider some sort of a least super algebra. Uh, and so it's uh, well, or, well, some, at least a super algebra type structure underlying this, and that should be the BPS state algebra, giving rise to this, this partition function. So that was the question I had. And uh, uh, so uh, that was the natural question. So I asked around. Uh, oh, okay. So it's somehow I asked around. And uh, so when I was a student, I asked around. And then in my institute, there was Kyoji Saito, who is a great fan of this uh, elliptic uh, root system, et cetera. And he suggested, oh, it should be elliptic. And also, I, I, I also talked to Sir Jinko, and he, he was starting working on quantum troidal. So, uh, so it's. Um, <laughs> Um, so I saw that, okay, so there should be some elliptic or quantum corridor type structure behind it. Um, the, but I myself didn't know about the algebra and also the representation theory of this algebra has, were not much developed uh, back then. So uh, I put set aside and then started doing other things. But it turns out that in the intermediate uh, years, there are a lot of developments on this uh, representation theory and quantum Troy the algebras and also its reduction of Yangians. Uh, in, in particular, the, there is a nice set of papers by this Fagin and Jimbo Miwa Mukin. Um, and uh, so a very nice old set of papers. Uh, and, and what I'm going to talk about today is based on their insight, part three. Okay, so now let's come to the uh, quiver Yangian. And first, let me describe the algebra. So uh, there are two ingredients, at least, uh, for this describing this series. So first is uh, we introduce this equivariant parameters. Uh, so equivariant parameters, so each of these arrows in the crystal, they correspond to arrows, one of the arrows of the quiver. So for each arrow of the quiver, you associate some number. And, uh, and, and then, uh, okay, so here, uh, for, for this purpose, there, this is a very minus question, but for, for the purpose of defining the uh, the uh, algebra, quiver Yangian, I impose the condition that the sum of the weights for any loop should be, uh, it should be zero. So I said that there are two different, there can be multiple ways of starting from one place and going to another, and which differ by going around the loop. So if you impose this condition, then uh, these, uh, these, these, these weights give the same answer, uh, irrespective of how you go from one point to the other. So these are with regard to equivalent parameters. At this point, it's not completely obvious why it's equivalent parameters, but uh, it imposes this constraint. So here, here I have an example. So th this is a previous example of C3. 
just a one node cleaver, but I just load it, write it periodically so that the structure is easier to see. And uh, here, this uh, green, green state region is a fundamental region of the torus. So here, there are only one vertex and then two regions, two triangles. That corresponds to two times in the superpotential. And here we have three arrows, so and we have base H1, H2, H3, whose sum is zero. So that's the for C3. So can, can I just understand what the I here are the arrows? In the loop, L is the loop for, right? So the condition is that you're summing around all the loops equals zero. Yes, that's right. So here, for example, in this case, there is a triangle uh, going around this, uh, for C3 example, there is a triangle uh, with the weights H1, H2, H3. Mm -hmm. So that means that the, for C3 example, the sum of H1, H2, H3 is zero. Mm -hmm. And the sum the of an arrow around a vertex A, vertex, that means you have a in and out, so you take the yes. plus or minus, am I correct? Yes, yes, that's right, that's okay. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, th indeed, thank, thank you so much. In fact, uh, that, that's uh, what I call the vertex constraint. Okay, thank you. Yes, and uh, so indeed, so, you, you, so in the loop constraint, it is the minimally needed one for the definition of the algebra. And, uh, and if you count the number of parameters, how many parameters there are, if you impose the loop constraints, the number, there are many parameters. For each uh, lattice point of this, uh, there is a one or two uh, parameters. So there are many parameters. So if you go to more complicated examples, you get more and more parameters. Now, for some other purposes, uh, you further impose this vertex constraint, which uh, he was asking about. So at, the, for, at each vertex, you impose this constraint. Depending on in, whether incoming or outcoming, you count with the signs. And if you further impose this condition, then you reduce the two parameters. Uh, so it's three parameters, one constraint, and that's the same as the case of C3. And that's the, uh, so this gives a coordinate on the projection onto the two-dimensional frame. Anyway, so uh, here, I just uh, minimally, I just impose the root constraint, and that's the uh, equivalent uh, weight. Very, very simple. So you just impose the weight to, for each of the arrows and impose the condition sum is zero. Now, uh, there, the second ingredient is the uh, generator. So it's a uh, uh, algebra, so defined by generators and relations. So what are the generators? So we have a set of Shubari generators. And, uh, and each of this, okay, so first of all, there is an index A, and this index A is the set of uh, vertices of the quiver. For each vertex, there is a set of uh, Shubari type generators. And, and each generator has the dependence, holomorphic dependence on this formal parameter Z, which I call the spectral parameter. Uh, this obviously has, is motivated by connection to integral models, but at this point, it's just a formal parameter. And so you can define each of these generators in terms of the formal parameter Z. So for example, if you expand EA, you have E and A. It's this formal parameter Z. So you have infinite set of generators. Interesting for Psi, in general, you have to start with minus infinity to infinity, not from zero to infinity. So that's an interesting subtlety. And, and so, uh, but anyway, those are, those are the generators. And, and also impose the Z2 grading on, on, on each of these generators. So it's, it, it's, uh, so it's, there is a Z2 grading, so it can be even or odd. And that's determined by the number of arrows uh, coming, starting and coming back to the same, uh, same vertex. Mm -hmm. So EA, et cetera, remember, is associated with each node. And whenever there is an arrow starting and coming back to itself, I declare that it's an uh, 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 even, even node. The mm -hmm. the idea is that if you have that node, you can go around come, coming around and then keep, uh, you can start with the node and come back to itself infinitely many times. That, and that sounds awfully a lot like a bosons because bosons you can create many. But if you don't have self loops, you cannot do that. And that sounds like a fermion. So, uh, so that's, uh, that's just a type of rule for Z2 grading. Now, uh, th now there is finally the relation. So probably this is the most important one. So uh, here we, we set the relations. And uh, okay, first of all, the first equation is, for example, easy to see that psi is commute. Now, in these other equations, uh, so they specify the relations between psi and E, for example, and psi to F, etc. And here you have this uh, e e equality, uh, but not complete equality, but an equality with similar, etc. And so each of these things means the equality up to some powers of Z or W. 
And, and I forgot to write that delta is a z minus w. Delta is z minus w, the difference between z and w. And, uh, and there is a function bar phi in the definition, uh, which is determined by this data of the quiver. So for each incoming, uh, for A and B, for example, whenever there is an arrow from B to A, you have a factor in the numerator. And similarly, you have a, the other factor in the denominator uh, if the arrow goes in the opposite direction. So, so that's, uh, uh, that's this bar phi function determined from the quiver data. And you just, uh, so that, that appears in the relations. And, and if you don't uh, like this representation, you can just uh, expand everything in terms of powers of z and w. Uh, and, you, and then you get the awfully complicated uh, relations. So I, I just, uh, so you remember that each of this psi ef, et cetera, you can expand with this with the spectral parameter. So there is a sub-index mode n here. And you have some relations satisfied here. And, uh, and in particular, it's not just a commutator or anti-commutator. So you have a, uh, this uh, bracket K, which is defined toward the bottom right. And, uh, and uh, it's, it's complicated. It's some complicated combination. And uh, it's not even, yeah. So it, it is quadratic at least, but it's some complicated relations. And it's, yeah, I mean, so I'm not sure if these are that they're eliminating, but at least that's the, that's the relation written in terms of mode. So for my purposes, it's much, typically much, much easier if you just use keep the spectral parameter dependence. Um, Mr. Hito, are, are you aware of any geometric uh, string theory interpretation of the spectral parameter? Well, so the spectral, yeah, let's see. So, uh, well, um, yeah, uh, let's see. Well, the co coordinate yeah. on some Riemann surface possibly with some puncture. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a basically related question how to realize it in terms of 4D chance simons or it's 5D chance simons. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I, I think there are some, some results in this direction, but I don't have a good, yeah, I don't have a good, good, uh, good thing to say at, at this moment. So I, I'm thinking about it, but uh, yeah. But, but I agree that morally speaking, it should be that if you realize this from string theory construction, there is a spectral curve. So, and then that's the parameter you're, you're talking about. But there are also some related mystery. For example, they, this, yeah, as I come into it, this is algebra which corresponds to the affine Youngian. But as far as I know, I heard that uh, there is no RTT realization of these Youngians. Maybe some experts in the audience know, but for example. So, I mean, it, it's not like, uh, it's really the, yeah, all the aspects of inter models are understood and it's just a question of embedding that. But not, not its, it's status is not really like that. So. Um, but I, I thought there is RTT for the full uh, quantum tower law, right? So. Okay, yeah, but for example, I, 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 I mean this, uh, this type of algebra. So, uh, okay, I shouldn't substitute up on Youngians, they say equivalent Youngians. And uh, so what are these, uh, yeah, under R matrices starting on this, so. And, and, and if, uh, if the quiver has only one single vertex and uh, one, one single air loop pointing to itself, and is this just the Greenfield Youngian? Uh, is this just what? Sorry, I couldn't hear. No, you, you take a very special quiver called the Jordan quiver with one single no, vertex no, no. and one single loop pointing to itself. And you, the, if, you, that, if you choose some parameters H correctly, do you, do you get the green fields on Yangjin construction? That's for the uh, here. No, okay, maybe that's true. I mean, for, for example, for my purpose, I start with the toric carbius 3 and then the Jordan quiver is not realized on the toric carbius 3. I understand. Mm -hmm. I understand, but the, 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 the construction theory is very much of a quiver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, quiver. indeed, indeed. But this definition works. This definition works in general. So, yeah. So, so the quiver is talking a different C. Uh, sorry, it's a little bit hard to see. Uh, so here. Yeah, so the Jordan quiver would be D0 brain in one, in one complex dimension as opposed to three. Uh -huh. Right. That's right. So, so indeed, uh, so that's, so I mean, I think if you can start, for example, you can start with a quiver for C3. And I'm going to talk about, well, maybe I don't have time, but I, I, there, you can discuss the truncation of the geometry and algebra. In fact, that's really with what uh, Miroslav did with the Kyoto, for example. So you can do, discuss this truncation of this algebra and construct a smaller algebra. And, and then uh, that corresponds to basically truncating the geometry in a sense. So I think the Jordan quiver should be realizable that way. 
Does this algebra know about stability conditions or, or uh, is this only in like the, for the, in the, like for the five dBPS states counted by the topological uh, string? Uh, for the algebra itself will be independent of the stability conditions. But uh, what changes is the representation. So you have the same algebra and then you have a different representation. And, and is that going to be clear from the physics construction of, of this algebra? Well, let's see. Yeah, I mean, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, well, let's see. Uh, well, it's a little bit sort of big because, for example, I said that I can keep the algebra and talk about the representation, but sometimes when you have a different representation, you can also try to truncate. So, oh, but here, not in this case, sorry. Okay. Yeah. I have okay. The same yeah. How about physically? What's the meaning of this algebra? What does it mean physically? Yeah, so that means to basically, let's see. So for example, you have the super generator E and F, right? So, so that means that you change the dimension vector of the PPS state. So basically you have the bound state of particles. In fact, that's uh, really with what uh, I might talk about if I have time towards the end. So, but uh, if you have a BPS state into the count of particles, and this E generator, for example, is just bringing in some other BPS particle from infinity and makes a larger bound state, is a larger charge. That, that itself is the same as even the, for the case of Hilbert's beam or C3, or what Nakajima did, for example. Sure, but uh, um, is it somehow supposed to, uh, to, to keep track of BPS degeneracy so that uh, as, it, as it increases the, you know, the charge, it also, it also somehow, uh, I mean, it, it acts as an, some honest BPS algebra or is it, so we know that these generators carry charge. So all you all you say is that well, it increases the charge, but in which way? Like what what information does that carry? Well, let's see. So well, okay. So let's see. What information? I'm not sure. Let's see. Uh, well, of course, if you bring in uh, some particle with some charge, the charges do add up. So in that sense, the charges are preserved. And uh, but uh, yeah. So but for for example, and and uh, and then uh, uh, let's see. So yeah. So uh, and. Uh, and uh, yeah, and so th th that's how you understand this uh, super generator. So um, uh, let's see, uh, I'm not sure if you, what you're really looking for. Um, so I mean like, so, so far the, Physics con the physics meaning of this algebra you've told us is that it we can bring in like a d zero brain from infinity and add it to to the BPS to some BPS bound state and no matter what st stability chamber we're in we can always do that and, and that will take some BPS state to some other BPS state. Um, <laughs> it, it, but is that the entire physical content of this algebra or or is or is there it are yeah is is there more. Well, let's see. Uh, well, maybe that depends on how the counters of physical quantity. So, I mean, in fact, this is, yeah, I mean, in other words, this base, basically, yeah, uh, the algebra itself is really like that. So, like, there are BPS states, and if you change the parameters, you can just decompose, cut and cut and uh, start with the smaller ingredients, you can make the larger ingredients. And, and in fact, that's basically it. And because then if you have that, everything is on the, in a sense, you know everything, right? So, you can start with basic building blocks, and you, I mean, and then just bring it together and, uh, uh, make a larger co complicated one. In fact, that's basically why if you know the algebra, you can, you know, the whole BPS generacy, which is the character of this algebra. Uh, that, how does that last? I, I think work? maybe you want to say that. Sorry, Sorry go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead, Max. <laughs> maybe you want to say that uh, the algebra you're constructing acts on bound states of D6 brains and lower dimensional brains. And, and what, so I'm, I'm just guessing. And then, uh, and then these generators that you're writing uh, take you from one bound state of uh, a DC, one single DC. Uh, sorry, I lost the sound. Can people hear me? Yes, we can hear you, but we we cannot hear her. Uh, I see. 
Yeah, she, she she doesn't have the power. She's, she's using her phone in Berkeley because of the fire. Oh, yeah. I see, I see. Uh, okay. Masahito, I got kicked out. Was the answer to my question yes? <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't hear what you said. Okay. Uh, I suspect what this algebra is is as following. You take a 1D6 brain on a Calabi-Yau, one single D6 brain, plus any number of lower dimensional brains, two brains, four brains, and zero brains. And then what this algebra does, it takes uh, any bound state of 1D6 brain plus lower dimensional brains to other bound states. So that's 1D6 brain plus other lower dimensional brains. So that somehow the bound states of 1D6 brain plus any other number of brains are module for this algebra. And that's somehow the, that, that's the statement. Yeah, that's right. You, yeah, okay. Okay, good. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's right. Yeah, that, that's right. So here, uh, here I just talk about the algebra and then uh, have a very emphasized about physical aspect, in fact. Uh, so I organized the talk that way. But, uh, but yeah, and it is. So it's just uh, uh, the algebra itself is like a, I mean, algebra of like a, it, operation of removing or adding the BPS states, right? BPS particle with the charge. So it's like a, yeah, it, it, well, that, that particle can have any charge, D0 charge, D2 charge, but it can still eliminate the zero. And, uh, but the basic building blocks are correspond to these atoms in the crystal, which correspond to a particular node in the quiver. So for each node of the quiver, there is a basic building blocks and any BPS state is melt out of that. So that's what the crystal melting picture suggests. So the idea of physical intuition is that it's, these are like basically, okay, so it, it, this is basically like a building block. Any BPS state is made up of states correspond to vertices of the quiver. And, uh, and hence, if you know what happens if you try to remove or add one of these atoms, then, uh, then, then, then things are under, under control. And well, of course, that depends on the stability condition, et cetera, enters into precisely what states are available, uh, are stable or not, et cetera. And that, that person wants to take in different representations. Actually, yeah, now, now for the, uh, mm, sorry. Yeah, Masahito, I, I think I'm confused. Uh, there should be two different things, as Mina pointed out, the module for the algebra and the, and the algebra itself. What you are describing okay. here is the algebra that adds or removes the, the, the D0 brains or the, the compact brains. But then, okay. then depending on the choice of stability structure and so, uh, choice of uh, different like orient, uh, configuration of non-compact brains, you're getting different modules for the algebra, right? Mm -hmm. And what, right. Uh, but when you're talking about the crystal melting itself, you are describing a particular uh, module for the algebra, which is the vacuum, something I would call vacuum modules, D6 module, right? So, yeah. so maybe I should clarify that. So here, in the definition of the algebra, I actually mm -hmm. haven't used the uh, crystal melting. The all I use is the quiver with uh, potential. I think this is, this is actually an important comment. Thank you. Yeah, so in, indeed. So maybe maybe organize the structure, like uh, start with the crystal melting, et cetera. But here, just the quiver with potential. Yeah, and in fact, the potential only comes into the weights, equivalent weights. So basically, almost like a basically just the quiver itself. So once you have the quiver, you can write down the algebra. So it's uh, for that reason, it's, it, it doesn't really, yeah, it doesn't depend on specific uh, yeah stability parameter, etc. And the algebra is already there. But once you go go to different chambers, if you do wall crossing, etc., uh, that 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 corresponds to different crystals, in fact. So if you start with the one crystal in one chamber, but then you have a different crystal in another chamber, for example. And the way the thing I explained corresponds to one particular chamber. People call it a usually call it a non commuter GT, but it's a different chamber. And you have a different uh, crystal melting structure, and hence uh, you have different representation of the same algebra. So that, that's, the, that's, that's, that's what happens here. So is there a crystal melting for every stability structure? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes, for, for this, uh, yeah, uh, at least when, when the chamber structures are understood uh, completely well. For example, basically for all these generalized conifold geometries. Uh, everything is uh, understood. So all the chamber structures are understood, and the crystal melting crystal 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 is there for any any chamber. And, and uh, yeah. in fact, in some chambers, sometimes the partition function is finite. So here you, you have an infinite uh, crystal, but some, in some some other chambers, I have a very finite uh, crystal. It's a finite number of counts. And, and in fact, in that example, in some chamber, the partition function is one. Just they're just only trivial BPS state. So uh, you can yeah, you can do all these things. And uh, and uh, anyway, so that that's uh, that's that's the state of the art. Also, this. Uh, yeah. 
uh, also this GL1 Fine Youngian has these modules, uh, the bo box counting with these infinite arrows of, uh, uh, of boxes in along one of the, one of the uh, side of the, of the 3D corner, right? Um, is there a, um, is there a, oh, sorry, what I'm trying to say. Let me ask later, let me ask later. I'll have to think about it. I think what Miroslav is trying to ask is that for the, for the affine Youngian and for quantum toroidal, the algebra has mo many more representations than just a, a D6 brain bound to stop. It has, for example, it knows about any number of D4 brains. So you can yeah, take yeah, for him yeah. Virma and so forth. And so does yeah. your algebra have such representations as well? Does it capture all yeah. the brains in some sense, not just, uh, yeah, it yeah, should yeah, be, that's, right? That's right, that's right. Yeah, that's right. So yeah, for that, uh, okay, so yeah, that's right. So. Uh, yeah, um, that's, that's like, I'm going to talk about one particular representation corresponding to D6 frame, but then you can also truncate the algebra. Uh, there are some null states and you can truncate the representation and the corresponding truncate algebra. And that corresponds to the inclusion of D4 brains. And the counterpart for C3 is that you start with Afan Yang Yang, which is the W1 plus infinity Afan Yang Yang, and then you truncate to this algebra, which uh, we also often introduced Y LMN, for example. So that's a truncation with D4 brains. And, and exactly the same thing you can do uh, here. Okay, so does it give you information about say bound states of D4 brains on P2, which is a hard problem as far as I know. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, 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 yes, I, I agree with that. So I agree with that. So it's, uh, so that, that's why- I'm Understanding the BPS structure is known about it. Yeah, I think, the, I, I agree with that. So it's, it's supposed to be, yeah, it's supposed to be unknown. So it's, a bit, it's kind of contained there. It's contained, not kind of, it's contained here. Uh, it's, yeah, it's it's already contained here, but I, it, it's probably useful to uh, to be more explicit. So I have a question on this in this formula that uh, you have a a arrow to b. Is that the among all the paths going from a to b, or or just uh, try to understand all some of the forms? Yeah, all, right. all of the paths and. The absolute yeah. value is the length of that path, or that's a different. Uh... Uh, sorry, what is the absolute value? Uh... Your absolute value of from B to A or from A to B, the arrow. That, that uh, sorry, not this is single, not absolute that's value. Single, that you, you have a single arrow. Yes, so oh. if you have a single arrow, you just have this one factor of U plus HI, for example. Uh -huh. So the absolute yeah. value is the length of the, the path, am I correct? Uh, sorry, what is absolute value? So here, I suppose in, 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 in this uh, say relation, the summation, you are taking the summation k going from zero to absolute value from a to b. Oh, yes. uh, sorry. Yeah, uh, sorry. Yeah, in fact, uh, sorry. Uh, sorry. Here, I talk, yeah, it's a number of set. Yes, sorry. That's the number of arrows in the path, right? Yes, yes, that's right. Number of arrows from a okay. to b. Yes, thank you. So, so the weight doesn't have any play here. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, indeed, I didn't explain. Yeah, that's right. Thank yeah. you. But you could have many different paths. Yeah, how many different paths there are from A to B? Uh huh. There could be many. Uh, yeah, there yeah, could be they, many. They could they could they could have a different length, can they? The different what? Uh, different length. So one path has five arrows. So another path could have four arrows. Is that? Oh yeah, yeah, yes, that's right. So then, so right. So if you take a different vertices on the quiver. Uh, it might have different even, even with the two uh, with the even with the two fixed vertices a and b, but you could have many different paths. Yes. With the different lengths, so the summation. I try to understand the serial relation, or in this relation, the summation k goes from zero to the length of b to a, and uh, roughly what you are thinking. Uh, sorry, but if you sorry, uh, I'm not sure how to. So if you fix well, partly I couldn't hear some parts, but the, if you fix a and b. You count the number mm -hmm. of arrows, right? So, and that's the absolute value. So that's, there, that's what happens. And that's how could be A and B. We're, we're counting the number of arrows from where? From A to, from vertex A to vertex B. And it, including, so for example, if I have a square, uh, add up all possible arrows from all, among all the paths or Uh, okay, uh, okay, I'm sorry, I still don't get the question. So A, yeah, once you specify A and B, so maybe I say yeah, the same suppose, thing. Yeah, suppose I have a pentagon and I have some 
for different paths. How? Oh, sorry, sorry. Okay, oh, oh, I see, I see. Okay, that's why you worry. So A and B are corresponds to. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. That's so. Sorry. Yeah. In fact, that's why you. Uh, okay. So this A and B are vertices of the original quiver diagram, not the, not the quiver diagram on written on the periodic plane, but really the quiver diagram. I mean, small quiver diagrams. Oh, I, I, I understand. That's why I'm asking. So, for example, maybe I go to the previous example. Here I have this. Uh, so the number of arrows is meant by the number of arrows in this picture, for example. So you have a one, two, three, three vertices, and the arrows in between. So for example, if you count the number of arrows from one to two, there is just one arrow in this example. There are no so kind of arrow from, two, from, from two to one. There from are many. Two to one, there is also one vertex. Well, sorry, one arrow. There, there is only one single path. Are you uh -huh, saying? Uh -huh. Yes. Yes. Okay, I see. So, so the the quiver you are dealing with just between two vertices, there is at most one. Yes, that's right. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so between thank the you. two vertices of this uh, quiver. So of course, in general, there are no no arrows. In that case, you set it to zero. And, and and I know that you're worried about the pentagons, etc. Because uh, yeah, because you're worried about uh, I mean going through multiple paths, multiple segments of the path, and going from one point to the another, etc. And then indeed, if you have a pentagon number, it's well defined. But you're not doing that. So I just literally count the number of paths, not the paths, like a very one segment of the arrow, which goes from one vertex to another. Okay, uh, other questions? And, uh, yeah, so anyway, so this is the, uh, okay, so far I haven't really told you the physical content, but at least just uh, so far I just said the statement that uh, uh, just, uh, just the infinite dimensional algebra. Uh, okay. You explained to us how you, wrote down, how, how you wrote down this algebra, right? Yeah. Where, uh, where, uh, where, uh, yeah, so that, that's where that's how we we derive this from uh, uh, quiver quantum mechanics. So that's the geometrical part, and so that's actually we did it in two different ways. So in my first paper with Wei, uh, uh, so we look at uh, some known cases of C three, and uh, which is known to have a representation in terms of frame partitions, and then we replace that uh, by uh, by uh, more complicated crystal, and then try to cook up some algebra which acts on that. Uh, by working on the mathematical content. So uh, by making ansatz and try to guess the form of the algebra. And, and then that's the, that's the algebra which I'm presenting. But, but of course, that's a mathematical argument. Well, of course, the, the fixed point crystal itself is, is a fixed point of DPS state, so it has a physical content. But at least that construction is like a try and spotty try and error and then the analogy. Uh, so, uh, so, so and then there is a more physical question, how can you derive this algebra? And that's the part you might be interested in. Maybe should I jump onto that? <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I can jump onto that at least. You can just say whatever you think uh, we need to hear, so. Yeah, okay, yeah, 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 sure, sure. Yeah, so, okay, so I can, I can yeah, let's see. So here, let's see. Um, yeah, okay, maybe let me comment, make a little bit more comments about uh, algebra. So here, we just introduced algebra, and uh, oh, here, for example, so, uh, yeah, and in general, what is this algebra? So, uh, in the, so if you have a general toric carrier 3, it's a new algebra. And so, uh, but for, for example, if you, first thing, if you take a C3, the simplest toric carrier, and then it corresponds to the fine Yang of GL1. Now, uh, if you talk about uh, more other geometry, for example, this is a Z2 O before the C3. And the associate quiver is this, and then it, it gives us to a fine angle GL2. Or in general, if you have this uh, more general geometry, so it's generalized conifold, uh, and, and then it gives us to a fine angle of GL M slash N, uh, which was suggested in middle stuff. And uh, also, there is an interesting mathematics paper describing this uh, algebra. So in some cases, uh, in fact, in, these are the examples where there are no compact four cycles. People call it a small resolution. And for these examples, the algebra is used is normal. But for other cases, in fact, rather generic uh, Tori Cardio 3, the algebra, uh, it doesn't have any uh, yeah, uh, previous uh, results. OK, and then uh, let's see. The statement is that maybe I just show one slide about the representation. 
So the representation is that you start with this algebra and you define some states. Uh, so here it's a crystal configuration and then define the representation in this form. And, uh, and the precise form doesn't matter, but the twist that this E and F generator, sugar gen generators, it adds one or uh, eliminate, adds or removes one atom from the crystal. So whenever you can add it, you have to sum over that adding ones with some particular weights. And, and then there's a prefactor and the weights and, uh, and the impo most important part is, is there's function, it's a product on some factor, which is the bar five, which appeared in the uh, commutation relations. So the mathematical contents is that this gives a well-defined representation of the algebra, which you can verify directly by checking the commutation relations here and there. Now, uh, now I think I can come to uh, uh, discussion of how to understand this some physics of the Kleberg quantum mechanics. And, uh, and, and the way to do that is that, uh, first of all, uh, because the, the probably that's of interested audience. So, so here, this is, this is the same slide as, as I had before. And uh, this algebra, uh, we should be able to understand purely from this uh, quantum mechanics of, on, on the BPS particles. And in particular, it keeps a way of generating a modular space. So let's try to uh, derive this algebra starting from this quantum mechanics. So, so the way to do that is the follows. So first of all, we start with the quiver. Again, with the quiver with potential because that was the input. And, and then there is a, uh, there is a well-defined, uh, uh, okay, so uh, BPS states, the state of BPS states is basically the uh, equivalent homology with this is a supercharge, uh, which is denoted Q1, Q1 dot bar. It's one of the four supercharges of the theory. And uh, uh, okay, and then uh, it's the, it's, it acts on the spaces spanned by the fields associated with the edges and the vertices. So chiral multiplets and uh, vector multiplets. And uh, so chiral multiplet fields are denoted by Q and vector multiplet fields are denoted by X3 and phi. Phi is a complex combination of the two scale fields. And the supercharge, uh, as usual, it acts on, it's, it's a sort of a durable uh, operator acting on this space uh, of the fields and uh, we want to compute the cohomology. Now, we want to do it equivalent, uh, sorry, right, with the omega deformation uh, to smooth out the singularities and, uh, uh, sorry, okay, so here, yeah. Um, so, okay, first of all, here, this is vector field um, and uh, implementing the gauge transformation associated with the edges and uh, and, uh, and, uh, uh, and, and uh, also we have here, we have the stability parameter here uh, in the D term. And, and, and here we introduced the equivalent, uh, sorry, omega deformation, uh, which, in, which parameter we don't know by epsilon A. And in order to preserve the new potency of the supercharge, you have to impose a condition of the supercharge uh, on this uh, oh, sorry, omega deformation parameter. And, uh, and, and then bottom end line of the result is that super potential should be consistent. Uh, it should be consistent with that symmetry. So the sum of the charges uh, for the super potential should sum up to zero. And that's the same as the loop constraint which I denoted previously. So I changed the notation, but this, this HI which I denoted from top down without explaining anything like introduced previously, it's the same as the uh, omega background parameter. So here I have a supersymmetric quantum mechanics and then just do the omega deformation. And, and then if you want to go to the fixed point, et cetera, you do the lo uh, localization. So uh, you deform the supercharge by one parameter and uh, send that parameter to infinity and the thing simplify. Um, so, okay, so, uh, the, yeah, so let me not try to explain this because otherwise I'm already running out of time. Uh, but then the end result is that, uh, okay, so, okay, so here we have some uh, supercharge and you work out the limit of S goes to infinity, et cetera. So he told, and, uh, Yes. Let me just mention that our uh, seminars are usually up to two hours, so you still have 45 oh, really? minutes. I see. 
So take your time. Take your time. Yeah. yeah. I see. Okay. Then maybe I shouldn't rush too much. So, uh, yeah, I see. Yeah. Okay. Now I remember. Yeah, okay. So maybe maybe then then I should in fact no right. next rush it all the time. So so it's uh, maybe I, so yeah. So here we have we want to do the localization. Well, and I call it the Higgs branch localization because. Uh, Typically, in a lot of the discussion of these things, uh, people they do basically a Coulomb branch. Like there is a shuffle algebra description of the cohomological whole algebra, which is more on the Coulomb branch, in my understanding. Uh, but here I do it differently, uh, more like a Higgs branch, by taking the FI parameter to be large. FI parameter stability parameter is taken to be here large. So uh, it's so basically we are localizing onto the Higgs branch. So that's why there's a quiver arrows, et cetera. Ar arrows are uh, the, the fields associated with the Higgs branch, and that's why they become important. And uh, okay, so here in usual localization story, you have a supercharge and you deform the definition of supercharge by this parameter S. And, uh, and then star S equals zero is the original supercharge, but then you, you send S to infinity. So if you don't like a supercharge, this is just a little wall operator or some, some variance there. Of. And and then and then the, the cohomology should be preserved because it's conjugate it's by conjugation. Now now you want to discuss the limit where s goes to infinity and see what happens. And and basically uh, you 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 okay so here are lots of formulas and uh, maybe uh, I'm not really going to explain the formulas but here the point is that you want to uh, keep track of the when you send s to infinity and the safety parameter large. So many of the modes becomes very massive and they want to do this something like a Wilsonian RG. So I want to keep track of the modes which remain, uh, 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 which remain small and, and so whose frequencies are small. And the bottom line is that uh, uh, the wave function, wave function should satisfy uh, the BPS condition. Then it should be killed by some uh, supercharge which I denoted Q effective. So, okay, so what is Q effective? Uh, well, Q effective, I, I have the formula in the second line of the Q effective dagger, and it's given, written as a some concrete expression uh, in this uh, in the modular space uh, by inner product and then the partial derivative, et cetera, where this M and MI are coordinates on the manifold such that this, uh, uh, this action B, the gauge action is diagonalizes. So in general, you have to, we explain this in somewhere in appendix, but in general, you have to take the change of basis, et cetera, to diagonalize the option. So, and that's why, uh, why, why we introduced the coordinate MI. But anyway, so once you go to the nice coordinate, you can, there is a concrete expression for Q. And you can just solve the BBS condition that Q acting on the Psi, which is the wave function zero. And then that gives rise to the Euler, Euler class. Uh, and then this is, uh, this type of things are known in equivalent localization for a long time. And I think it's uh, explained in the, for example, long, longish article by Mua and company in the early 90s. Uh, we, we do it uh, a little bit differently so for our understanding. But, but anyway, so, he, so here the, the bottom line is that we have the Euler class as a representative of the wave function on the modular space. So, so, so here you're taking, uh, you're taking like uh, a particular representation of the quiver. So, so particular, uh, I don't know, ranks of the, of the, and trying to do uh, yes. quantum mechanics on the Higgs branch. Yes, that's right. Here, yeah, indeed, thank you for saying that. So here I have already specified the theory. So fixed uh, dimensional vectors. So each node, you have UN1 uh, gauge group, for example, and, uh, you, and where N1 is the, the dimensional vector of that, uh, of that quiver. So and let's fix that. Let's fix the usual gauge theory and, uh, and then just work out the uh, wave function, which is the order, car order class of the modular space. Uh, so are you guaranteed that these modular spaces are somehow nice and smooth and, and these things make sense? Well, let's see. Mathematically, I don't know, but uh, at least uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's, 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 things are regularized. But, yeah, I think things are, uh, um, I think, regularized you know, for, for, for our purposes. That, uh, yeah. Uh, for, for, for doing the computations. And in fact, sometimes the regularization is a little bit tricky. In fact, uh, we did a little bit more subtle thing in some parts of our discussion. And uh, uh, so, but, uh, so indeed the choice of how to regularize and what orders you should take in, when you're taking the limits is a little bit subtle. So, and uh, uh, 
So we, we, we chose some prescription and uh, which to me, uh, it gives rise to smooth, uh, smooth uh, geometry. But maybe, maybe if you are- so For example, uh, I, I thought that for these problems to make sense, this is the reason why I think Reinecke, when he studied his quantum mechanics, he put in one that If you just, for example, take like, uh, or, or say if you study brains on P, P2, <laughs> That's why you study the valence and quiver, and not the honest quiver of, of, of D3 brains. Uh, uh, in that would describe a D3 brain problem. Again, you'd have, I think you would have some problems. Uh, unless maybe working a covariant would help, but I, I suspect it may, may, may not help quite enough. So. I see. Yeah, maybe if you, yeah, uh, okay, uh, I see. If you could specify, but like, uh, let's see, if people know, like, uh, what exactly type of singularities appear, et cetera, then, then maybe you can discuss in this, uh, after this omega deformations, that's enough for smoothing out these uh, singularities. Yeah. Um. For example, I, I think in general, you're not going to have, for example, uh, like isolated fixed points, and then you, you pretty hard space where these things may not actually make sense. Other than maybe in examples like the first few examples that you that you explained without compact four cycles, I imagine that's a simple problem. The way, where everything goes through just just okay, and the fixed points are isolated and everything. You I see. I see. I see. Yeah, I mean, for for example, yeah, I don't I don't know whether really geometrically uh, this uh, uh, this procedure. Comp yeah, I mean, I, I don't have a satisfactory explanation or answer whether this dif this procedure we are adopting, like omega deforming, deforming, etc. Is it enough to cure all the singularities? Uh, I don't know, but uh, at least it gives us systematic procedure and you work out the things and how the algebra comes out and it's consistent with what we found. So I saw that the, uh, for, for my current uh, satisfaction, it's en is enough as a physicist, but, but, uh, uh, but I don't know, maybe there are some interesting phenomena happening here. We might be missing that, but if that's the case, it should be somehow reflected on the algebra, right? It's so algebra and how it's acting on the representation. So, uh, so th that, that, that's a question to be asked, I think. I mean, yeah, you're, you're trying to, the, 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 which are true for, for, for these simple collabials, which are not true more generally. So uh, on the other hand, you're writing down a concrete algebra. So I suppose at the end of the day, <laughs> you have this concrete oh. algebra, yeah. Yeah. the algebra yeah. makes yeah. sense. Yeah. And then if it makes sense, then you uh, Yeah, I, I find the final answer is correct because the, you have a well defined algebra in the presentation. So in that sense, it, it, it should be completely fine. Uh, as a must, the end, end result should be fine. But uh, it, may, it could be that there are some subtle points we are missing in the, inside, in the middle of this uh, discussion when we're trying to derive this algebra this way. And, uh, but for, uh, all, all I can say is that even if there are some subtleties, that should uh, somehow disappear in the end product. Yeah, uh, in fact, maybe I should say, have a comment. For example, if, depending on whether you have a compact uh, four cycle or not, uh, I mean, it, it almost looks like uh, most of the ingredients are the same, except that some difference is that in the young yams, sorry, if you go to compact example with compact four cycles, the, Algebras, sorry, the quivers are not chiral. So, uh, they, as you know, there are only two arrows, go, arrows in going one direction, but not in the other direction. So, uh, and then that, that's, that, and, and that's reflected the fact that this bar phi function, which appears in the commutation relation. So that's not, uh, that doesn't have any, uh, uh, it's not, it's not, uh, uh, it's a rational function with a numerator denominator, but numerator and denominator don't have, a, uh, have the same degree. And that changes the structure a lot, in fact. And, uh, and in particular, uh, for example, same relations. So we have algebra and uh, uh, you can also impose extra same relations, but those, those same relations are not known for this uh, more general cases, more compact full cycle. So the, even at the algebra, purely algebraic level, there are some differences. And uh, yeah, but whether that has anything to do with the more geometrical facts you mentioned, I don't know.
Yeah. Okay. So let's let's come back to this. Um, so here, so far, I just started the metric uh, 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 quiver quantum mechanics, and uh, and then there is a uh, uh, okay. So I and then in, in the end, I obtained uh, this moduli space which kind of smoothed out, and then the wave function which is all across. So, but so far, I have specified the quiver dimension. You specify the theory, quiver dimension vector. Now, uh, now if you want to. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, if you want to uh, discuss the algebra, you should go beyond that. So you should uh, have an operation of mapping one theory to another. And that corresponds to changing the dimension vector at the nodes of the quiver. And, and that's the, uh, that, that's the uh, uh, like a Hecke modification. So here you have a dimension vector and uh, shift the dimension vector by plus minus one at one of the nodes of the quiver. So if you shift it to the one, that should correspond to raising operator and uh, minus one to the lowering operator. And uh, let's see. So what, what is that, uh, 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 what is that thing? So that's a big question, but uh, at least what, let's see. First of all, if you, if, you have, if you can identify such operator, E, e hat and F hat, you can basically construct algebra. So um, uh, here I define the generators out of that, uh, 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 shift low, raising lowering operators, and then it's, you can define the action on the configurations. But uh, the old ingredients are encoded here uh, in this uh, e hat f hat, which is the uh, action, which is the expectation value of this raising e, e hat in f hat in in this wave function psi lambda psi lambda and psi lambda plus uh, box. For example, this raising operator. So you add one, no, you increase the dimension vector at one of the nodes which I did not e-hat, and, and that changes the state psi lambda to psi lambda plus box. And, and you have to compute this uh, tra uh, transition amplitude in between these two states and in the correct normalization. And, and that's the computation. And, uh, uh, and, and so first of all, so, and, and the result is that, uh, so this, this is the, uh, the form, it turns out the correct formula is given by uh, this expression, uh, which in the first line. So uh, if you try to increase the uh, dimension vector, by, and so increase the dimension vector by one means to correspond add, corresponds to adding one box to the, uh, to the crystal. So that's why I denote lambda plus box. And then there is a coefficient in front, which is the ratio of the Euler character, uh, so Euler plus. And then the, so this Euler plus is this, uh, uh, so, uh, so this, is, uh, this is the lambda for the lambda itself and also the, it's a relative order across between this lambda and lambda plus box. So what this means is that if you have a, uh, sorry, oh, okay, I, should, I should have denoted the name of lambda, not sigma. So if you have a sigma and sigma plus box, for each of this sigma, well, first of all, you should, let's take a, like a crystal state, lambda. And there is associated moduli space, which I denote uh, m lambda, sorry, not sigma, m lambda. And, and there are BPS states are characterized by ideals of pass algebra. It's a particular one, so which is high one, and uh, and then also similar one for lambda plus one box I mean. And if you have a direct product, these are completely independent. But of course, these should be related if you want to add one box to the other. And and that gives rise like, to so the incidence relations, inclusion relation between the uh, between these ideals. And uh, uh, and. Uh, and, and then that's defined some, uh, some manifold inside this uh, product uh, defined by this instance relation. And that gives side to this over across. Uh, or, or, yeah, so this uh, lambda, lambda plus box. And, and there's a mathematical derivation of this, uh, which is basically that there's an instant uh, locus inside this uh, direct, direct product. And you can do the Fourier Macan transform using that as a kernel. And that's how people define, as, as far as I understand, this uh, uh, raising lower operator. And uh, okay, so that's the mathematical definition, which you can also adapt here. Uh, we have a little bit more physical discussion uh, in our paper. Uh, in fact, uh, many of the details are complicated. We have to uh, work out the which modes remain, et cetera. But at least one of the ideas is for us. So first of all, uh, okay, so in fact, I already said that in reply to some of the questions, but uh, we have a BPS bound state. So these are like a BPS bound set of atoms. And if you want to increase the number of uh, atoms in the crystal configuration, you're supposed to bring one from far away, such that the dimension vector or B you have a larger BPS state algebra. 
And, and when you do that, you have to uh, do a highly non-trivial operation. You start with infinity and then try to bring it in. And, uh, and it's hard to keep track of everything completely, but, but at least uh, what, what you'd expect is that uh, along the process, some of the high frequency modes, which I did not before, goes to low frequency modes and vice versa. Recall that when you do this localization, I was doing something like a Lewisonian RG, and I split into uh, high, high, well, higher frequency modes and lower frequency modes and uh, in, the, in the process of localization. And, and then I was always talking about this low, low, low frequency modes and uh, effective supercharge acting on that. That's how I get all across. But uh, along, this trans, uh, along the way of these transportations, there are some factors uh, coming out. And then so you have to keep track of what, which modes of this uh, wave function, uh, uh, like a higher frequency mode, you might become lower frequency modes and vice versa. You have to keep track of that. And, and what you should do in practice is that you, you do this very concretely. Uh, we have an uh, um, implementation in computer programs. And the way to do that is that we basically, you have, uh, for example, these um, quivers, right? So for each arrow, you have uh, matrices associated with that. You can specify dimension vectors and in certain commutation relations, and also you, you can deform it. And, uh, uh, and so, so and, sorry, some parameters allowed by the deformation and uh, and, and, uh, and also you have to diagonalize the gauge field action I was talking about. So you have to go through this, go this procedure and keep track of each modes have this, uh, uh, have the higher, uh, can be integrated out. And, and uh, if you do this transportation, you see that there are some, some factors coming out. Perhaps I should, maybe that's the, that's the part you might wanted to do, uh, to, uh, to know more. But I didn't prepare the slide for that, but that's explained in very detail in uh, some of the appendices. I didn't include that, but somehow the computations are very complicated. Uh, and so using that, we have some argument, uh, if not legal as for why you get this factor of this coefficient of this. Uh, and anyway, so that's, that's the intuition and in in you can also do the concrete. So, but that's useful because we can compute this number. So it's defined abstractly, but you can also compute it, uh, compute these numbers. Uh, and so that's how you get this uh, 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 action of the algebra uh, from quantum. So, and, uh, and, and uh, this expression we can work out in concrete numbers. And then, so what's interesting is that then once you get these numbers, uh, action of E hat and F hat, um, then, then you can check whether the algebra relations are satisfied or not. So perhaps maybe I should clarify here uh, in this discussion, uh, actually, when I started working with the Quiver quantum mechanics, et cetera, I kind of pretended that I don't know anything about the Quiver Young representation, which I introduced previously. Just let's forget about that, everything, and just say that I have a quantum mechanics moduli space and I can define this uh, Hecke modification. Uh, and then that, that gives us an algebra that defines some algebra from first principle. And then the coefficient you can compute. And the coefficients tend to be some comp complete function of some rational function of equivalent parameters. And, and then you can just use that to check the algebra relations are satisfied or not. And quite often there are some highly non-trivial uh, conspiracies happening behind. And uh, uh, I think, uh, so this is the, so this is just one example. We have some, in fact, in typically the older expressions are too complicated to put in the paper uh, because in, it, it's a longish expression in the, in the Mathematica. But uh, at least we have some, 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 some things are in the appendices and this is one of the examples of the appendix. So, uh, so here we have the, okay, so we have a complicated example, GL3, GL3, uh, 3, 1, slash 1, and uh, affine yang yang. So this corresponds to generalized conifold x1 equal to z cubed times uh, w. And you have the same relation, which is written known to be take this form, some combination of this. So there is extra generation to the quiver Youngians. And that's supposed to, oh, this is supposed to be zero. And uh, okay, so these are acting on some state. So, okay, so this is a relation in the algebra, but you can let it act on some crystal configurations. And, and I forgot this what lambda node we choose. Uh, it's in the paper, but it's some complicated uh, crystal configuration, but not too complicated, like uh, several atoms. And let it act and compute this coefficient. And so this is, uh, I didn't, maybe I didn't introduce the notation, but it, this is a, co a commutator, anti-commutator, depending on the Z2 grading of these vertices. Uh, and so if you expand, there are uh, like a 24 terms. 24, uh, not 12, uh, not 24, oh, I see. There, there, there are many terms if you expand, uh, because 
uh, maybe there's some cancellation happening uh, already. So there, there are many terms here if you expand uh, this. Uh, and then for each of these expressions, you can, you, you can compute these expressions. So it's, uh, as I said, it's a ra ratio of these uh, equivalent parameters. Uh, which we choose to be h bar one and h bar two. And uh, we have a very complicated expression and uh, I don't see any structure here, but, but it turns out if you sum it up, uh, they, they add up to zero. Uh, so, so that's how, so the algebra relations are satisfied and that's how you check the algebra relations. Can, can you show us again the definition of these generators in terms of um, in terms of the, the, the gauge theory field? Uh, let's see. Uh, maybe, sorry, oh yeah, that. Uh -huh. yeah. I see. So 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 from this formula, right? What, what what it says is that you should think of the z variable as the position on this complex plane in four dimensional space, right? You break up the four dimensional. Yes, yes that's right. That's right. I see, that's extremely yeah. interesting. Yeah, yeah, if I'm sorry, maybe, maybe in, in this, for example, this uh, phi, for example, so that's also a complex field. And, and so in a sense, so, so the crystal is becoming a little bit more critical, like a crystal, 3D crystal projected 2D, but that also looks like this, this complex frame. So- yeah, But that, um, well, that's what I was asking. So it was some, probably not a plane, but some curve, right? Um, some spectrum. Oh, sorry, curve. I see, I see. Yeah. Oh, I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. Yeah, I see, I see. Yeah, no, that's right. So that's uh, that's uh, that's that's that, that's the complex parameter. So, uh, so it's actually yeah, yeah that's right. It's, it's it is a frame in the comp on the crystal. And in particular, that you're not going to have any braiding in this plane, right? Because uh, because of this omega action that you need. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. And that's yeah, that's right. So that that's kind of consistent because we are supposed to talk about sort of young yams and uh, yeah. And uh, sorry, is this consistent with what you know about young guns? <laughs> yeah, I think so. And, uh, and for example, the, the fact that it's uh, no braiding, for example. So, and the young there is no braiding because it's higher coordinate. So, so uh, it, because everything is things are complex. So, basically, because of the holomorphicity, this is a parameter. So, uh, no, 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 but here you can't even deform, you, you can't move. You can't move anything away from away from z is equal to zero. Everything here happens at z is equal to zero. Uh, sorry, well, what do you mean by everything happens here at z equal to zero? Well, uh, well, because of, because of the omega action, right? Uh, if you, uh, I mean, you can't really honestly uh, do any kind of the, that plane is rigidified by omega uh, omega action that that you need, I think, to to make this quantum mechanics massive enough. No. Uh, I think sorry, that, uh, no, no, sorry. I don't think this is true, Mina, what you're saying, because this z is a parameter in orthogonal direction. This z is not a parameter associated to the uh, Calabial threefold in which we are turning on omega. No, it's not a Calabial threefold. It's in the four-dimensional space. Exactly. He breaks up the four-dimensional space in time, times the, times the x3 direction, times oh, another complex sorry. plane. Oh, that, and that complex oh, plane oh, has omega action. I think. Oh, no, here, this, sorry. Oh, okay, that's what you said. Oh, sorry. I don't, then I didn't get what you said. So, yeah, this z no, is... No, I don't the, think there is omega in that, in, in that plane. Sure it is. In his formulation of the quantum mechanics, you turn it on. I, I think you need it to keep track of the spin. You, I think you want to turn it on in almost anything. But mm, I think you need it. Well, I think there is this, non, in these extra di the directions, there should be non, non commutative deformation, but I'm not sure if it's exactly omega. It's something, so actually in those extra di directions, you have Z and you have another coordinate, coordinate say P, that anti-commute. So there's some non-trivial structure associated with the extra four, four directions, uh, but there's definitely something non-trivial happening in the z-plane. And it leads to the structure of co-product on these algebras and these kind of things. But, but, but didn't he write, I mean, I think everybody, you turn on some deformation of the z-plane, right? Or the phi. Yes. Sorry, but, okay, but that, those are the transverse direction to quantum mechanics, right? So yeah, so it's a, it's a part of the, yeah, that's right. So these two directions that like a coordinates of the 2D projection to the crystal, they correspond to uh, omega background parameters. And that, that's what you said, right? So, but those, those are the part of the Caravia direction, omega background parameter themselves. 
Oh, but Z, Z does not even apply to Biao directly. Uh, Z is the, the, the origin. origin. Sorry, did you, did you say anything, uh, Peter? Uh, yeah, I'm just saying that Z is not, does not live on Calabiao, does it? It's in the orthogonal. Like, yeah, so like, can you have like, you know, one of those tables with 10 directions and then show uh, where uh, sort of, you know, like where's Calabiao directions, where is this orthogonal directions? So it's like type two, type two A on Calabiao three. Yeah, type two A on Calabiao three, this phi, uh, so for example, this, this phi is, uh, uh, the scalars in the vector model. So it's actually, yeah, sorry. Yeah, indeed, so it's, sorry, yeah. So it's one of the, okay, so you, you're talking about the quiver quantum mechanics, dimension reduction, 14 equal one, and some of the components of the gauge field. Like uh, two of the components of the gauge field complexified, and that is uh, five. Okay, so it is, it is so a, it's a Okay, so that, that, is, that itself, yeah, this phi itself lives in the direction transverse to the cardio. It's because it's a, uh, uh, sorry, sorry, uh, sorry. Uh, uh, it's a component, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. So it's a, it's a yeah, move, movement along the, that direction. So you have a four dimensions, which is transverse to Karabiao and, uh, and, uh, and the direction trans, so you have a quantum because there are three remaining directions. And that three remaining directions is parameter by X3 and uh, phi, complex phi. Ah, uh, okay. And then the particle moves in the, in the other direction, in the fourth one. Okay. Right. Yeah. So I have one more question. Your psi uh, has an expansion that goes from minus infinity to infinity. Is that correct? Uh huh. Got right. uh, But in the representation that you uh, wrote down, I think all the psi. Uh, all the sides with negative indices act, act by zero. Is it correct? Uh, let's see. Was, was that correct or not? So let's see. Yeah, well, let's see. Uh, let me try to remember. Um, where is the representation? So representation is here. Uh, well, okay. So that's really this, this, uh, homogeneous, whether this is a homogeneous polynomial or not. So for example, if you biofy, for, for example, if it's a chiral quiver and the biofy has the same degree at the numerator denominator, then this doesn't uh, increase the degree. So indeed, you can just restrict to the positive part. So that, that's, that's the typical case. But if you have a more general case, this bar file itself has, uh, is for example, one over some rational function, et cetera. So you have, it also has a very negative power, z to z to c cube or z to the fourth power, et cetera, that, they, they do come in. That's why you have to yeah, include these higher modes as well for the consistency. Right. So this is the information that prefactor of the of the of the psi, right? You're yes. just saying that it can be some polynomial or some something more complicated that has different. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. But in but in the examples that you found from the the, the, the example that that all the examples that come from the BPS quantum mechanics considerations, do you get some non-trivial prefactor psi zero that that leads to some negative ne negative uh, psi modes? Uh, negative, well, sorry, well, okay, sorry, so there, if, if you have, sorry, if you have an example with a compact four cycle, it keeps size to negative psi, right? So as I said, is that what you're asking? Uh, uh, you mean the examples without compact four cycle? Uh, is that what you're asking about? No, 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 I'm not asking about the compact four cycle. I'm asking about this, uh, this psi, if, because the standard, say, if, if you are in the uh, C3 case, the standard uh, shifted Youngian, the, the standard affine Youngian doesn't have this uh, size zero. So that, the psi doesn't have the negative modes, right? Then there are those mm -hmm. shifted Youngians uh, that do have, do that or might have uh, negative modes of, of size zero. So I'm just basically yeah. asking uh, where there, there is some like explicit example of a module where the psi, uh, size with negative modes act by not, don't act as zero. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I saw, I saw that the answer is yes. Uh, and, uh, uh, it, it, yeah, I think if you restrict to, yeah, because for example, if, yeah, I think that, that that's yes. I think, uh, for example, depending on the order of this polynomial. So for example, if you take P1 times P1, and then this is like, a, 
huh? net degree is like a two, like a, there are two hours oh, coming. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Okay. I see, I see. So you're saying that in those examples, non-trivial negative modes appear and they are essential. Okay, thank uh -huh. you. That's right, that's right. Yeah, and then also, because in that case, uh, there are only, the net degree is only two, for example. So I think, uh, okay, I need to remember detail, but I think you need my, psi minus one minus two for the consistency of the presentation. But you don't need much further, I think, if I'm correct. But, okay, good. Thank uh, you. Sorry, maybe, but, sorry, but may, yeah, maybe if you keep acting, you might generate some things with some more higher power. Maybe that, uh, yeah, but anyway, it's extremely crucial to have these things. And uh, yeah, in fact, that's why that's one particular feature uh, of this uh, case with compact four cycles that you cannot truncate to this. Uh, so it's like an infinite shifted Yandian. So <laughs> that's, that's kind of needed for this uh, construction. Can I ask some follow-up questions about these, these including D4 brains? Uh, yes. My understanding was that it, like, okay, we, we know how, one way to get these BPS counting functions is you do the 45D lift and, and then uh, as in your paper with Mina, uh, you, you can use wall crossing to figure out the, BP, the BPS spectrum in all other chambers. But that only mm -hmm. worked when you didn't have compact four cycles and when you just had a single D6 brain, right? So, so mm -hmm. how, how are, are you claiming you can use this algebra to solve for the BPS degeneracies for any number of D6 brains and any number of D4 brains or? or, or? Uh, yeah, uh, for the D6, well, it's either one D6 brain. I think uh, people have studied multiple D6 brain, but uh, uh, I, I just here for this purpose, I haven't, uh, Consider that. And that's actually good. Yeah, in fact, the D6 brain, I didn't really specify, I mean, emphasize so much, but it's implicit here. In every, when I start with the crystal, et cetera, there is a, so D6 brain gives that a framing, right? So, so, and then there's a, having D6 brain means that's the one dimension, one vector, uh, sorry, vector space there. So you always start from there and it's just one arrow. And then that's the beginning, you start creating the crystal. But, but if you have, for example, multiple D6 brain, you already have extra da many data, right? So if you're from your service and there are multiple arrows, et cetera. So you need extra more data to specify the representation. And so it's a, I think it's a, I, I think you need to generalize this story with a multiple D6 brain. But now okay. for the D6 brain and for the D4 brains, yeah, so you can do multiple D4 brains. And in fact, I have some slides uh, for that. So I can, I can discuss the D4 brains and uh, so, yeah, I'm, for example, yes. How how does yes. one? Um. Uh, I see. Okay. So the way the way you solve the counting problem is just directly by looking at the quiver quantum mechanics, um, and. Okay. Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, that's right. So quiver quantum mechanics. So whether you have a D four brain or D six brain, that corresponds to adding different extra framing nodes. So that's like a changing the extra data, but but the machinery works irrespective. Of, like you can start with ADH and fever, for example. You can start with the ADH and fever. I mean, I emphasize the carbon three because that's sort of a new part. But you can start with the ADH and fever and then do the, the similar computations hours. In fact, we started doing that, uh, uh, but from that example, and then work out things, etc. Or even yeah. So we can start with the C two, for example, C two fever, and uh, and then derive the partition, for example, 2D partition out of that using this quiver uh, quantum localization. So, uh, so the machinery itself works. And as you might imagine, if you have a D4 brains and uh, it just changes the framing of the quiver, so you can repeat the same senior machinery and then obtain the uh, expressions in algebra. At, at the same time, I mean, uh, you know, lots is known about BPS states on, on things like P2 and so forth. So. Yeah, I would especially be interested in seeing a calculation for, for just pure D4 brains on, on a single P2. What does the algebra uh -huh. say? And if, if it really agrees all of that, then that, that would be fantastic. That would be really uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, I mean, the derivation is really derivation. I think I would not sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, I, I couldn't hear in the middle, but it's not watertight. So, I mean, it's not, yeah, it's not watertight. So, we have some argument. And then, so, for, for example, we just declare that, okay, let's regularize it this way. Is it the correct regularization or all that? So, uh, so that's a sort of question we don't necessarily answer in detail. 
No, I mean, indeed, check, uh, yeah, I, but I agree that it's very interesting just to check with the compact default variant. It just, it's just, it's part of a homeworism, so, but it's nice to compare with the explicit expressions and, and uh, things like that, so. It, is it not qualitatively surprising that it's, that including D4 brains doesn't totally break everything because like, it, you know, the, in your wall, your paper with Mina, the, the wall crossing for D0, D2 was very nice because everything was mutually local. And once you have mm -hmm. the D4 brain, uh, you, you know, think things should be much more ugly. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Like, like, yeah, dealing with wall cross shouldn't like, you should need to bring the yeah. whole power, full power of the wall crossing formula to bear now, right? Yeah, I mean, I agree with your sentiment, and I think that's an interesting point. So, indeed, it's a bit, for example, when I say that, okay, we bring the BPS particle from infinity, etc. But, uh, yeah, as you say, it's a, if it's a D4, it makes a pairing with D2, and then something non trivial. Yeah, complicated. I mean, it already has the angular momentum already at infinity, and what happens. And so, you might worry that that might change the uh, uh, structure uh, quite a bit. But I don't know. I, I, at least at the level of the concrete analysis in quantum quantum mechanics, in the and, uh, and and the modular space and things like that. So uh, I don't see any, see any, any part, you know, that much of a difference between uh, because it's after all it's just a different cleaver. Right? So and uh, but uh, but I also so, so that, that's what I said so far. But I, I agree that the, the physics should be slightly different. And so uh, uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Thanks. Well, the defaults are going to lead just to a different module of these algebras, right? Uh -huh, uh, right. I would love to see how those can be constructed from the, uh, like some examples, how, how you can, how those can be constructed within your framework. Because how, mm -hmm. how we did it for this, for this in the simple case is that we consider the action of the cohomological whole algebra on a quiver where we attach some extra framing. So is there some kind mm -hmm. of ramification of your, um, uh, of your crystal melt melting problem that introduces these D4 brains and how you can mm -hmm. naturally define actual uh, action of the algebras that you wrote down on these like more general crystal uh, crystal meltings. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, so yeah, that's right. So in, in fact, uh, right, sorry. So right, so for, you, you can do various different levels. For example, you can start with the D6 frame level, work at R by 7 and truncate it. But indeed, as you say, you can go back to crystal and already write on the crystal for yeah. the D4 brain. Oh. And uh, and uh, yeah, so that in general, okay, so that I haven't, uh, yeah, uh, that, that's interesting and I don't know. But for, for, for example, in, even in the old days, uh, there are some papers. In fact, there's a paper by Nishinaka and also Yamaguchi. Uh, and uh, so who, there are actually like two or three papers who kind of, yeah, who did that for some very special case. Maybe, maybe it was, I forgot his example. Uh, well, also it was a very special number, D4, like a D4 brain charge in only one of the regions here in the sub uh, wave, et cetera. And, uh, but, but anyway, you can uh, give it a, a crystal melting. So anyway, you can start with the quiver again and then do the crystal melting. And in their paper, I think they tried to really do this, uh, really, uh, this uh, affine. Uh, so so they, they do the crystal melting and then also, yeah, okay, first of all, they did the wall crossing and then computed the partition function starting with chamber and obtained the character of the affine cuts moody algebra. That's the, that's the classic Nakajima case. And then also they cook up some statistical mechanical model representing that. And, uh, and that one, it, it looks like, um, if I remember correctly, it was still two dimensional. But first of all, in the crystal structure I was talking about, it's always three dimensional, but that one is two dimensional structure, which is not too surprising because uh, yeah, it's like a 3D partition reduces 2D partition. And, and, uh, but there was a little bit more structure, like uh, they were talking about the triangles, but two different triangles with the, like uh, this triangle and that triangle, two different shaded triangles and they superimpose into each other and uh, counting with that. And, uh, and, and then that, that matches this, this character of a fine cut smoothie algebra. That, that's, that's, that, that's, that's what they did. So, and, uh, and, but now we have this more general machineries and all that. So I think uh, you should be able to also write down the crystal uh, for them directly. It's not hard to work out what, you know, so, so your quivers would, would know about a compact D4 brains automatically. But if you wanted to add non-compact D4 brains, then, uh, you need uh, framing nodes indeed. Uh, yes. And it's not hard to work, so you just need to know how many arrows do you have between the framing nodes and the, and the, the compact ones, and that's a calculus. 
you know, that, that, that's a simple calculation and a definite one. So you could just derive yeah, what they would right. be. Yeah, that's right. And then usually, for example, in ADHMP, but there's I and J, right? So coming back and forth from that trig node. And uh, so is it, there, there are arrows, and when you consider vacuum moduli space, there are corresponding fields corresponding to that. But if I'm correct, if you do the analysis of moduli space, at least in some cases, you can set either, I forgot, one of I or J to zero, for example. So, so the moduli space analysis, the moduli space simplifies and then, and, uh, and so the situation not too different from the yeah, case but the i and j yeah, but the i and j is just they're simply the strings between the forebrain right. and the brain, and it's a hypermouth split, right? Here you have a different situation where the nodes of the quiver have definite ranges, and you know the number of strings between the forebrain and those, which is a definite string question. Uh -huh, uh -huh. It's something you just derive, right? You just calculate. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with that. So I agree with that. So since we know that geometric setup is clear, you can just count how many arrows there are computed and and, uh, and that gives a quiver and then you can repeat the same thing. And uh, and uh, yeah, so that should tell you, tell you about the uh, case with four cycles too. And, uh, and yeah, so, and then, so that should have a crystal melting representation. Also some truncated algebra should act on that. So, I mean, we have, we discussed a little bit abstractly what the algebra should be, but uh, maybe write on the algebra more concretely what they look like. And uh, uh, so, uh, yeah. But I just want to be clear. The what you're saying is for the case of toric Calabia three folds, even with, with with compact four cycles, the entire conservative Soibelman and wall crossing formula should just boil down to saying you you replace one representation of this algebra. By a different representation of the algebra. Uh, yeah, that's 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 my understanding. Just like uh, the cases without compact four cycle. Yeah. That I mean, that's pretty amazing because the conservative Schwabelman formula. Is, yeah, it's like I don't know. Yeah, but I don't know. I mean, but for, for example, that's what I think. But, uh, but for example, in, in our paper, in the paper we put out an archive so far, uh, we didn't really discuss the wall crossing. I and mean, we are now thinking about the wall cross, some aspect of wall crossing. So, I mean, so uh, there, there are too many things to do. So we didn't really discuss in detail wall crossing. So we are now kind of looking at how, how to, well, first of all, incorporate wall crossing, and, which is to some extent is almost trivial because uh, what we, if you do the wall crossing, as you say, you just have a different crystal. But, Many the right. representation in zero, it works to almost the same formula. You don't you actually use the particular shape of the crystal, and uh, so. But 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 modulus and sort of to think about. So it I don't necessarily exclude. So maybe the conservative I should say that I don't know because it's, it's maybe it's a, when I try to work at the, some details of the representation, it might not work in other chambers. So, but I, I doubt that personally right now. Wouldn't you have to sort of automatically include it because you always have to pick a stability condition in your quantum mechanics? Uh, let's see. Uh, well, uh, okay. So if I, there are several different parts of the story. For example, the, the discussion of the uh, quiver quantum mechanics we, we, we discussed uh, afterwards. So uh, yeah, so here, for example, I was talking about, the, for example, Coulomb branch, sorry, not the Higgs branch localization and then you have a hierarchy on the FI parameter. If I, I keep the FI parameter large, et cetera. So that suggests that that discussion itself is not, strictly speaking, not applicable to all the chambers, for example. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, so, you, so for that reason, if, you're, yeah, if, you, if you want to the physics argument, you might be skeptical if, if it happens all the way deep into the modular space. I see. And okay. uh, so, so this could. Yes. So that, that's, that's one comment. But on the other hand, I can also take a viewpoint. Okay, so okay, for so this uh, okay, this uh, physics derivation from the uh, quantum mechanics is interesting. But I just take a crystal, for example, a crystal for this uh, general chamber is known, and like a uh, and then you just let the, uh, let it act, act data algebra acts on that, and whether the representation is consistent or not, and I, I, that seems to work, even when the quantum mechanics derivation, strictly speaking, doesn't apply. So so. Um... There, there is so far no way to actually do the count uh, in that in 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 those chambers when you have compact four cycles because the forty five d lift argument doesn't work um, and the the quiver quantum mechanics the the localization argument required this large theta chamber. Uh, yeah, uh, that that's true, and uh, yeah, so but but yeah, that, that that's true. Yeah. 
But what, what I said, yeah, that's right. So what I said in the other part is that uh, nevertheless, uh, for example, if you look at the shape of the crystal and then like uh, go into different chambers, like uh, cutting the crystal one by one, for example. So it's actually easy to extrapolate all the way to this, uh, all the chambers by uh, making the, I mean, keep cutting or keep stacking the layers in the crystal. So that seems to discuss the, all the chamber, all the different chambers of the crystal. So uh, of the of the program. So so and then if you say that uh, so that that's, before coming to the algebra, you can just say that okay, this crystal uh, counts the uh, describe all the different chamber structures and all the correctly counts the BPS states. And then if you accept that, and then uh, this algebra does act on this crystal, which is a highly non-trivial uh, argument. So suggestion that evidence that probably the story works in exactly the same way. Uh, in, in, in the region, region deep in the chamber. Wait, I'm sorry, I, I'm, I'm afraid you, you cut out, so I missed more of this, most of this. So uh, the kind of thing you can, the, the kind of thing you can, um, you can describe easily, for example, is, uh, uh, so, uh, so let's take local P2, just as our toy example. Uh, the, the thing that your theory describes easily is local P2 at the orbital point. So, mm -hmm. so, so this is a place where, you know, basically D4 is an anti Enter, enter democratically as the nodes of your quiver. So that you can describe, right? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the other thing you can describe is some um, uh, some chambers related to um, uh, basically do some simple it's some simple cyber duality in your quiver. So description of of the whole spectrum and and, and things are very simple. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think I, from that computation, understand what the actual spectrum of pure orbit on a large P2. I, I think that's very hard, even with average solvent. Um, I, I don't think that that kind of question you can answer, but it would be amazing if you can. Uh -huh. So it lives at the orbital point. Um, yeah, and you can. Uh, lost the connection, I guess. Uh, One, when yeah. you take the uh, when you take the P two to be large, but uh, but uh, th there is, you know, you, you don't really uh, to go from one to the even though you know in principle the spectrum in both chambers, there's some kind of infinite recombination to go from one to the other. In other words. You have to read some infinitely many states, so it it doesn't really help. Like even conservative Solomon doesn't really help as far as I mean. So it depends mm -hmm. what you want to do, I suppose. Uh, but uh, yeah. So if you wanted to answer, for example, b build right. some structure. The jump is uh, on, on, highly non to discuss, but uh, yeah. But for yeah. example, if you know the fever uh, before, uh, not the crystal. Sorry. If you wanted to know, for example, how to solve uh, Calabial threefold out of C3 patches in, in some kind of scheme that I think Miroslav imagined in some other places, um, I don't think that that crystal directly is, is, is useful. You have some kind, of, some, some kind of reorganization happens where, you know, you don't really care about d 4 brains and anti d 4 brains that together your quiver describes at a P2, at, at the orbital point. So. Well, the gluing prescription won't work in general, but that's, uh, that's, that's in a sense that's needed for describing a general chamber, right? So if you have a general chamber, you cannot simply cut into pieces. But, but still, I mean, having, uh, yeah, I, I wonder how many, so what is your statement again? What, you, what does your algebra describe? Does it, uh, how, do you think it knows about all the modules, the BPS that's in all of the moduli of, say, local P2? Uh, yeah, I think so. E even though it's, it's, uh, it's derived at a point where, uh, where uh, basically, uh, um, you know, D4 brains and anti-D4 brains are mutually supersymmetric because you're in some highly non-geometric phase. Yeah, I think so. So the, the, the assumption is that the algebra stays same, which is motivated by, so as long as the, we are in the chamber, which has a crystal built-in type description. 
then I think it's safe. Wait, but, but to, to describe, uh, you know, the, the, the thing that this, the kinds of crystal meltings that describe, for example, a large P2. corners and then um, and then that's I think supposed to sorry yeah. could you, could you, we, we couldn't hear so what, what was that so the change crystal uh, for P2 in the yeah so so if you if you uh, if you wanted to get a large P2 right uh, yes, like yes. a very very large P2 then I don't think that uh, you know you, you, the brains that are supersymmetric near the, the description in terms of the brains you started with that does not really work at all. I mean, uh, not at all at all, I think. Uh, you know, because at, for large P2, d and anti d are definitely not mutually supersymmetric, no matter what you do. <laughs> and, and, okay. and, 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 uh, and you need some kind of a different description, maybe where, where everything can somehow be built in terms of D0 brains and having turned on a large B field on a Calabiao. So, the, the only description I know, for example, of a large P2 does not involve a quiver. It's possible. It's, it would be really amazing, as everybody has said, I think, many times. If, if, if this really captures all of string theory on, uh, on that geometry. Uh -huh. So, so just, just to make sure, so for, for the P2 with the very large board, are you saying that there is no like a quiver description? No. I don't think so, no. I don't, I no, it's, it's, it's not, it's not, a, it's not a quiver, I think. I oh. see, I see, I see. Oh, yeah, I see, I see, I see. Yeah, okay, for, the, for those reasons, I, 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 I don't know, I, uh, I have no idea, because every, yeah. everything that's crucial, I mean, crystal melting of BTS and quiver, everything that's crucial in the quiver yeah. description. So. Yeah, quivers are very yeah. special, right? You need to be in a point in a moduli space where basically half of, the, half of your b brains are essentially aligned, have preserved, essentially the same supersymmetry, which, is, which, which are very, 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 very special points. Uh, I think they're quite rare, so. I see. Yeah, I mean, it could, so, it, yeah, uh, that's right. So, okay, so for, for extending to those reasons, I, I don't know. I mean, but so, somehow it, yeah, uh, I don't know, it, that's certainly uh, logically possible, so, and, uh, uh, yeah, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, but for example, somehow the, the algebra stays constant in many of the regions, but then there is a jump and then the algebra description breaks down somewhere, like a <laughs> grief of the <laughs> grief of the R's in the old days or something. So that sounds a little bit, <laughs> but also very dramatic too. And, and, uh, and it might be not sure to imagine that the algebra itself somehow extends all the way. But, but of course, if there is no quiver description, there is no input data in a sense. So, uh, yeah, how, how much you can extrapolate these constructions all the way? Uh, that's an uh, issue to be discussed. So, so far, in fact, we, we didn't really discuss even the workers. We just in a particular chamber and we discussed it so far. But, uh, and, and so in terms of what you call the BPS algebra, right? This is, this is the algebra of, of, of just the light brains. Okay. But do we know, is, is that what, it, what, what it's somehow supposed to be? So if I, could I forget about the default brain and somehow formulate that algebra just in terms of some kind of scattering, pro like the Gregor originally, I think, more and um, originally that Im 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 imagined this, right? In terms of mm -hmm. some product structure of, 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 of brains associated with the nodes of the quiver. Do, do you see, the, see it that way? Well, let's see. Yeah, For I example. Think, uh, not, not, not necessarily sharply, but, uh, uh, but. Uh, I mean. I should be, for example, able to, uh, you know, instead of say, you know, add some bunch of brains to the D6 brain and then uh, add another bunch of brains to the D6 brain and uh -huh. instead recombine those two bunches first and then add them together. Um, th there should be some kind of consistency with it so that eventually you get information about just binding, uh, you know, D4 brains, D2 brains and D0 brains to each other independently of the D6 brain and get a product on that. It's very, I, I think this is the most, in, more, most interesting part about your story, really getting very, very close to actually, or, or maybe even just explaining to us what this algebra of VPS is supposed to be uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, in uh, concrete terms. That, that sounds uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. It, In uh, 
a lot of these cases where there seems to be some sort of algebra of BPS states, the vial group plays a role as like a, a group of describe of like discrete, uh, you know, describing all, all possible walls. Um, uh -huh. Is there some sort of algebraic interpretation of wall crossing in this context? Well, let's see. Yeah, wall crossing. Well, let's see. At least, uh, well, wall crossing, for example, in the case of uh, of Avan Yangi of GLM slash M, et cetera, appears, that's really with the choice of the, uh, like, uh, shuffling of the fermionic and bosonic nodes in the thinking diagram and things like that, which is, again, related with the break group action on the algebra. But in general, these things are like a change in the quiver, at least. So changing the quiver in such a way that uh, the content is same, which is the and that's basically the content of quiver mutation or Zybach duality. So, uh, so you can start with the quiver and then do the Zybach duo and then, and, and then we conjecture, and we have necessary proof that uh, the algebras are the same, for example. And, and then, so, but you, you have multiple nodes, you can do Zybach duo here and then there, et cetera, and then you make some, uh, so sure. I think that's where the general counterpart of the, 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 the Kawai group which you mentioned. I believe. But the cyber dualities are are not wall crossing, right? That that's just where some some BPS yeah. state leaves the like. Yeah, I mean, people call it right? the wall crossing the second kind. Or I forgot the I forgot the terminology in all this. But, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, from the point of view of the forty n equals two theory, those are perfectly smooth points. There's there's no wall crossing there. Uh -huh. Yeah, you change the description, and then so, but it's your it's just your choice. You choose the description, so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was uh, asking about the points where the there's genuine wall crossing. Uh, I see. Some algebraic picture going on. Like in K three times T two, there seems to be a generalized Katz Moody algebra present, and the vial group of that actually corresponds to to all of the walls. Um, I see. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean, for, for example, it's somewhat related with that. For example, you, you can ask the question, what is the counterpart of like a phi, phi 10 or something like a con choice of the contour, et cetera. And then I've sort of thought a little bit about that. But here, for example, we have even some expression in the numerator, not, not just the poles, but some, sometimes if you do the wall crossing, the zeros, positional zeros are changed, not the poles, for example. So it's not like a change in the contour. Uh, and uh, yeah, so uh, it, it, uh, yeah, I, I don't know which part of the story uh, for with higher supersymmetry generalized to here. Okay. Okay, so I think I have uh, spoken enough, I guess. So. <laughs> Uh, I think I should uh, finish because it already two. No, yeah, yeah I think well, how many hours is it? Yeah, maybe more than two hours, I guess. So, yeah, so I think, uh, uh, yeah, I'm fine. Yes. Uh, Thank you very much, Masahiro. Thank you so much, Masahiro. Thanks, Thank thanks for joining us so early in, in Japan. Thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah, great. Thank you so much. We really enjoyed it, I think. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for a lovely story. Okay, bye everyone. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for joining. Bye-bye.